Bap, bap, bap. Um, Pat. Action. <laughs> I have this weird thing where I need someone to say action. If, is that from MK Ultra? Have I been brainwashed in Hollywood? <laughs> no, you're like a real showbiz person. Like, I'm like a show. I'm like, I need. It's like a Pavlovian, like Pavlov's dog. This is like the only place that says action now with the writer's strike. So it's nice. Yeah. 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 I mean, what's that? The writer's How's strike? That? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How's that? I feel like this is never As an gonna... actor. There... Let me. Uh... No, I, I don't know. It looks bad. It's never going to end. Yeah. It's Do you kind think of, so? There's just like not a lot. I mean. As two people doing podcasts, which more people listen to, we're like, oh, God, movies and TV are going away. How did that happen? Like, we did this. We made yeah. sure it happened. Yeah, I think we all felt like ignored by the industry. So like, we'll do our, like not ignored in w one way or another, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, uh, we have to go make this or you have to yeah. do that. Or you can make a certain thing. You, you guys shouldn't make. have rejected us. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was a bad move on your part, you yeah, know. But, I, but then there's like, are we on air right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. On air. I don't know. Well, you said action. We're live. Industry <laughs> jargon. I don't know. What we're doing. Uh, on air. Or your showbiz live talk here. Live on film. Did you have you seen Oppenheimer or Barbie or anything? I that? haven't seen them yet. Yeah. Did you love? I liked Oppenheimer. I think Barbie's like whatever. Yeah, it, it's no, it's like a well, it's beautiful looking, but it's like Barbie for brunettes is just is just traumatic. Really? It's just like my whole childhood all over again. Like, I love that. Like, it's amazing how it was like the last couple of years, like body positivity, diversity. And everyone's yes. like, Barbie, a billion dollars. People are like, I know. And skinny, she's skinny, hot blonde. This well, that is was what like we the want. Big, that was like the big joke in the movie. The biggest laugh line is when she's like, I'm just worried I'm not pretty. And then the voiceover of Helen Mirren comes on and she's like, Margot Robbie's probably not the right person to make this point. It's like, but you wrote that line and yeah. cast Margot Robbie. Yeah, of course, of course. But it's, it's just funny that everyone was like, oh, thank God, a gorgeous blonde again. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, we no, got she... these Jews started taking over movies for a while. All this diversity was killing Hollywood and they just put a shiksa back in. But she's, uh, no, she's very hot. Do you have sisters? I have a sister, yeah. Because did she have Barbies? She was so much older than me. I don't think she had uh, Barbies, though. Okay. As far as I remember. So the brunette Barbie. She's a redhead, my sister. So, oh, really? Do yeah. you know what the name of the redhead Barbie is? Uh, canceled? <laughs> I don't know. What, what, what was the name? Sunburn? Re is that no. really? Oh, okay. <laughs> so Barbie is the hot blonde. Sure. And then everyone was, you know, whatever. There was always like a push for diversity, is my guess. I'm sure moms in the 70s were like, we need... Other ones or that whatever. Was diversity back in the day as a redhead. Is it? <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So to freckles, <laughs> diversity higher, <laughs> Irish, yeah. you know, ethnic. Um, Irish the... Barbie, she's just really sad and slumped <laughs> over a toilet. That's the most she depressing. She just comes horizontal. <laughs> um, she's wobbly when she tries to walk. Um, so the brunette's name is Skipper. Oh, okay. As in like skip her. <laughs> wow holy shit i'm not maybe maybe it's just like skipper like the brunette like what you name the doll barbie's Weird. like barbie and then there's like skipper barbie's interests were like malibu corvette sunbathing bikinis skipper's interests on the box were technology technology well she'd be doing better now <laughs> now it's yeah. she has a photo blog she blog. enjoys uploading photos to her photo blog. Oof. Have you ever heard a lonelier sentence That's in your life? Sad. And then the red she comes with a cat and a diary. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Brutal. And an egg, egg freezing kit. <laughs> <laughs> and like a plenty of fish profile. Like oh, it's bad. Plenty of fish is old school. Very old school. Did you ever do that one? No, but I was uh, in New Orleans or something recently performing. And I said, like, what dating app did you meet on? And someone said, POF. And I was like, what's that one? And it was like plenty of like, it's still around. Yeah. And they just, just use the acronym. Name. It's too sad a name. Yeah. It's also like you're saying fish. what people say when people break up. There's plenty of fish in the city. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's like true. made for loneliness. And the whole thing is that pussies smell like fish. Like I, it's yeah. always felt like. But I love seafood. A lot of smelly pussy That's a weird there. insult that a pussy smells like fish because. Uh huh. Seafood is delayed. It depends the kind of fish. That's true. They, it should be more specific. Like a, a nice sea bream. I'm not into yeah. a briny. <laughs> really? Meal. Hmm. Mm -mm. I love a briny. You're fish. like an oyster oyster guy. <laughs> I'll do oysters. I'll get in there too. Really? Yeah, I love it. Oh, he eats pussy. I can tell. <laughs> That's like whenever I see a guy eat oysters, I'm like, that guy goes hard. For sure. Yeah. Sometimes, so, sometimes you say that to them at the bar too, right? I, <laughs> 
you said, I bet you, I need, I bet you need a good put a little beef. lemon on it. But I do need to understand. I don't think oysters taste good. They make me gag. Do you have to start early? Or do you just um, have to hate yourself? No, I, I mean, I didn't eat them young. I think I was just like, let's roll the dice. For the I'm, price, you think that's a flavor <laughs> that's acceptable? No, we're such idiots too. I was with Gary Veter once who I bring on the road and, and we're in Buffalo and Gary had the bright idea to get takeout oysters sent to the club. Uh-uh. And I was like, are you a fucking idiot? And then he goes, oh, come on, dude, it's fine. And he takes one. <laughs> and then once, once you see someone else do it, you're like, well, I'm not going to let you go down alone. So I had the oysters take out too. They're just sitting around. No. That's how you die. No, Buffalo that's how you die. Buffalo take out oysters. <laughs> and we're both just belching on stage. It's one of those things where we're like, ugh. We're so lucky we didn't get ill. But isn't the whole idea you don't chew it? You try to try to get it down as you quickly as it. possible? You slurp it. That, I mean, they, they are supposed to be aphrodisiacs. And I think part of it is probably just that the motion of that. Oh, I'm sorry I did that. That was disgusting. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> sorry about that. No, no. Uh, no, but some three people just died in New York City from oysters. Really? Yeah, there's some sort of like... Fentanyl oysters have hit New York City? <laughs> what, a, what a combo that would be. <laughs> Dude, Hoity-toity. there's lots of fentanyl combos out here. I had a raccoon yeah. in my tree and couldn't get it out and it wasn't moving, which is unusual raccoon behavior. Like poking it, it's just like asleep. I call animal control. I'm like, which is, this is so California animal yeah. control. I was like, there's a raccoon in my tree. And the girl goes, um, yeah, that's where they live. <laughs> and I was like, no, it's. No, this it's is where I live, actually. Home. This Thank is you. actually my home. Yeah. I pay, you know. Yeah. And so, um, uh, and then I was like, it obviously something's wrong with it. It's sick. It's got rabies, whatever. Like, and if it bites something, whatever. And, uh, and then I was like, well, there's obviously something wrong with it. And she goes, oh, well, a lot of people, after they test their cocaine for fentanyl, and if it tests positive, they flush it down the toilet. So a lot of raccoons and coyotes have fentanyl in their blood system. So just, he'll sleep it off. <laughs> oh, my God. Like fentanyl raccoons? That is a bad... I'm out. That's a bad... I don't like fentanyl people. <laughs> That's a, we, were, we were just in Burlington last weekend, and... Uh, there were a lot of people on drugs there. It's, it's getting rough. In Vermont. Fucking terrible Didn't they just have a flood? Too. Did I make that up? I don't know if they had a flood, but uh, they did not have a flood of good jokes coming their way. Yeah. Because that crowd flood, fucking sucked. <laughs> the flood ravaged uh, Vermont. Yeah. But, they all just like lost their home. So it might uh, be that. Good. Good. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> but uh, we, had, we, we just walked by this lady and she just goes, fuck you. I hope you suck dicks till you die. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. What a great fucking... I mean, that's the way you want to get accosted, I guess. I mean, what was she, what was her deal? She was just on drugs. I don't know. Cool. But suck dicks I wish I die. was like that on drugs. That sounds like kind of punk rock. I hope you suck dicks until you die. Like, what do you die of? Asphyxiation? I don't know. It's like a new Stephen King or Lock something. Lockjaw? Or yeah. just like, yeah, cum toxicity? Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, you keep sucking. <laughs> yeah, like... I just had Dr. Duran. He was talking about how we project onto people. Anything we accuse people of is usually what we're doing. Like, she's going to suck dicks till she dies. Yeah. The irony is that's how she'll I don't know. Away. I don't know if she's meeting a lot of guys. Oh, yeah. I don't think, I don't think that's... <laughs> Was a her good... name Skipper? <laughs> Dude, the redhead name? What's her name? Redhead Barbie. Ginger They're... is my guess. No, Midge. Midge. Oh, right. I saw the movie. They mentioned that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A Midge is a bug. You know what annoyed me about the movie, too, is like the whole message of like, Everyone's got a special purpose. Is that true? I saw a woman in Vermont who told me to suck dicks till I die. I don't know if everyone's got a purpose. We got a couple minutes out of it on a podcast. That's true. Thanks, bitch. Thank you. She will call her, her Midge. Her purpose was to give you an opener oh. for the Good For You podcast. No, I, I just, I don't know. It's Look, it's it's not, people are like, it's not for you, which fine, fair enough. But mm-hmm. they're like, it's a kid's movie. Well, then why are they talking about the patriarchy? Which right, child right, is right. like, yeah, the patriarchy. I feel like you're a movie buff. I love movies. Uh, you love movies. Yeah. But hold on, Oppenheimer, I haven't seen it yet. Good. I just, when I see the three hour time, I'm like, that's a lot of time. I know. I love New York because I saw Michael Shannon walking in the same theater I mean, he, as me. He's to me the only hot actor. Wow. He's the, ac- the only actor to me that I'm like. The only hot actor. Michael Shannon over Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt is like I'm. I get it. Yeah. I'm just not like Brad Pitt. Sure. I like a. I like a sinister, dark, like um, you know, mall Santa vibe. Now I see how you got pregnant. This yeah. is crazy. <laughs> no, that's uh. No, I get it. He's attractive. Yeah, sure. I like a like a wonky vibe. No, he, like there's a, a dark. You, yeah, you're a comic. You appreciate. I like a, dark. a grittiness. I like. Yeah. I don't like like a. I like, and I like someone that doesn't think they're hot. As soon as a guy knows they're hot in some way, I'm like, out. 
Yeah, because he only ta- he only plays weirdos. Oh, dude, him in Shape of Water is just impeccable. He's awesome. His performance is impeccable. He's yeah, also so fun. talented. Yeah, I like that. What so was that movie? Nocturnal Animals. He was awesome in that. Oh, one. dude, he's he'll, like he'll yeah. go there. Yeah. I'm like, this guy knows how to fuck. Like, this guy does weird shit. <laughs> like, weird. Do you think Michael Shannon ever thought he, Whitney oh. Cummings would be talking about how he knows how to fuck on a podcast? Dude, Michael Shannon will... Podcasts are amazing. Dude, Michael Shannon will fish hook a bitch wow. in the backseat this of an is- Uber. Like, I just know, like, he's, like, gets down. Or he's, like, been married for 12 years and has four kids. Can you kids. imagine driving an Uber and Michael <laughs> Shannon's fingering a girl in your backseat? You're like, is that the dude from fucking... Shape no, of water? fish hook is in the mouth. Oh, that, yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess you could, could fish hook someone's, that's, yeah, you could do that too, I guess. I was so dumb that when I was a kid, my grandpa took me fishing <laughs> off like a thing, and I, I didn't know what it, I only saw in movies how they always throw it back, so I just threw it back, and then when I pulled it, it just went right into my leg. <laughs> I fucking fish hooked myself. Yeah, there's lots of uh, uh, my aunt um, when I lived in Virginia it worked at Orvis, which is a big fishing outlet place, and we'd go fishing and fly fishing, which is like the one where you kind of like tease it. And people that's would, like the coolest one. People would just like walk by with hooks in their face, like it was just be like they would just come. It was just like half the people. <laughs> that is fucking awful. Half the people that did it, like I gotta get a head out. I hooked my eyeball again. I mean, it was like in their eyelids. It was just like oh. a nightmare. Yeah, it's hard to do if the wind hits the wrong way. You got yeah. it. Um, Oppenheimer's uh, good, though. It's it's worth seeing. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to see it. I want to talk about some movie drama because you're yeah, a movie guy. Because I kind of feel like, like, here's the thing that bothers me about movies these days. I feel like I'm watching movies being sports. Like, everyone's just gunning for an Oscar, it feels like. I hate that shit. And I feel like I'm watching sports. I know. Everyone's like, I got to do the craziest thing to win an Oscar. I got to play Oppenheimer. I got to age myself. I got to do this. Like, it just feels like you guys are all trying to win a trophy right. instead of make movies for us not that they're bad yeah like to me that's what this bradley cooper thing is is he's just like i gotta oh the to win an oscar you gotta use a prosthetic you gotta do like it just looks like an oscar play but everyone else's thing is they're like he put on a prosthetic nose and that's jew face yeah i didn't i didn't appreciate the horns but i thought the nose was fine (laughs) Uh, no, the, uh, no, the, the, let me see his dick. I do see if he's <laughs> circumcised for the movie, that would be method, <laughs> right? That would be impressive. No, he, uh, I, even the anti-defamation league was like, this is fine, which they were the one first ones who were like, you know, complaining. So it's also more just cringe. Cause it's like, what you don't have to do this. First of all, no one knows what this guy looks like. He's playing a famous composer, which that's a whole other thing for me. Like, I don't want to watch music. Like, yeah, like, I liked, it could be good. No, but this could be good. I, I mean, liked um the drumming one. Miles oh, Teller, Whiplash. Whiplash. That was fucking awesome. That I loved. Yeah. But like, I don't need to watch someone compose. Yeah, but it's, it could be, he's got an interesting life. I mean, he's like a womanizing maestro. He's gay. Fun. Oh, he's yeah. He's gay, which that to me is a oh, weird thing that he's like, gay men need big noses right. to eat Holy ass. shit. Like, maybe he was he like, is he's gay. Yeah, that, the yeah. composer's gay. So that's the whole story. Huh. So they're like, gay guys need big noses to get done what they well, do. I've never heard, I've never heard the term Jew face before, except as a slur. I feel so like. So it's just funny that like, he's doing Jew face. I'm like, I've literally, oh, that's more offensive than what he's doing. That word. <laughs> saying Jew face. Uh, but no, I don't, uh, no, I don't think anyone. I think it's also who's making the movie. Like if Mel Gibson is producing the movie. <laughs> this is a bad choice. But if it's yes. like, if it's anyone else, you're kind of like, oh yeah, they were probably just trying to make him look different because as an yeah. actor, you do get to the point you're like, oh, I'm just watching Bradley Cooper in this movie. I'm watching Bradley Cooper in this movie. Yeah, he's great. I love Bradley That's Cooper. That's what acting it's also, is. It's also like, this one, exactly. Well, Someone's like, getting paid $20 million for a movie. I want to know they were in the makeup chair for four and a half hours trying yeah. to dazzle me and entertain me. That's why apparently Orson Welles used to always say like actors are the dumbest people you ever meet because back in the day <laughs> they would just sit in a makeup chair for like five hours, <laughs> shoot their lines and then try to fuck someone. So he was like, they don't read. They're not smart people. <laughs> and by the way, back but, then the makeup was so toxic. Like oh. I, I'm obsessed with the like behind the scenes stories of like Wizard of Oz and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The number of people that died of cancer from um, Wizard of Oz because of how toxic all the, the green paint was. Whoa. The woman got all these like burns on her face. The Tin Man like caught on fire because they, they used just like aluminum and mercury. It's like not bad enough. You were like one of the little people in Wizard <laughs> of Oz. Now your face caves in. Dude, a lot, <laughs> it's awful. A lot of them, uh, one of them committed suicide on the production Whoa. and they were- um, Didn't they raped or molesting too? her the whole time oh my god damn <laughs> um but you think I, women have it bad in hollywood now <laughs> the lead actress is getting raped by dwarves back then now that i mean uh no it's also like in movies all the time 
I mean, Gary Oldman put on a fat suit to play Churchill. No one's like, that's fattest. That I'm he's, sorry. You know. Have you seen Rosie O'Donnell's Riding the Bus with My Sister? That looks fucking rough. <laughs> That's for, that to me is like that's one where I'm like that should not have been made, but also thank God it thank was. Thank God it was made, yeah. dude. I hit that trailer a couple times a week, but like that's <laughs> if I'm giving you eighteen dollars, I better see a big swing. Yeah, I want to see a big swing. Okay, so are you ready? We gefault dear mean podcast. Do you know what I just said? How do you like my podcast? But in German. I've been getting very into learning speaking German. I'm not I'm not like I, I, I'm still trying to get Spanish down. OK, but I took a break because I can't stop reading these books about Hitler. I don't know how this I, something happens. And there's a certain point in your life. I don't know if I'm having kids. I don't know what's going on. I'm just in a Hitler. It's because I'm pregnant. I don't know. All of a sudden I'm into sex toys and Hitler. It's very <laughs> this is very odd, but I'm trying to learn Spanish. Uh, because I want my kid to learn Spanish like from the get-go. It's also not that hard, I gotta be honest, with Babbel. You can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. I am so sick of speaking just English. It's so boring. I'm just like, I'm sick of being an annoying American who's like, hey, y'all, like, I'm about to have a kid. I'm determined for him to not be an idiot like me and only know one language. One of my best friends already promised to teach him Spanish. And I don't want them to have like a secret language where they collude against me. It's good, good for the hinge bio to say you know all of those languages. Because now on dating apps, they're, everyone's, in all, everyone's in France now. I don't know. Everyone left America. At least all the founders. Those are the guys that I match with on Hinge. Anyway, <laughs> there's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get started right now. You're going to get 55% off. That's wild. Your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash good for you. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash good for you. Spell Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash good for you. All one word. I'm proud of you for learning a new language, girl. <laughs> I mean, the Bradley Cooper thing, I just, I have so many thoughts on this because I, I think to me, the oddest thing is the fact that his nose is already pretty big. It is pretty big. It's not like the fact that he was like, guys, we need him. I need a big nose for this. And everyone's like, yeah, how are we going (laughs) to? Yeah. Yeah. I guess we need to add prosthetics. Like, I just like when actors get more and more dysmorphic throughout their career and their choice. He's like, I got to put on a prosthetic nose so it looks like I have a big nose. And everyone's like, "Okay, cool, man. You have a big nose. You didn't have to do that. He's got a good big nose, but it's it's big. It's I don't I don't know. I think there's like the to even respond to the outrage seems a little bit ridiculous. But I like that comedians aren't the only ones getting attacked for dumb shit. (laughs) I feel like now these guys get attacked more because I think it's clear comedians don't give a shit. Yeah, it's true. Whereas like these guys, well, comedians are like, what do you true. want? It's a joke. But whereas these, the, he, this is not a joke. This is a dramatic play. Yeah. So he's more vulnerable to criticism. You know? Yeah. Or like, uh, but apparently Bernstein's family's happy with it. They're fine so with it. So it's like, who gives? He just wanted to wear it. Yeah, That's and the also, weirder part. He, gay Jew is, you're right. It's an Oscar <laughs> play. He's trying to get an Oscar. Yep. Dude, I, I believe but no one watches Oscar movies anymore. If you are going to take three hours of my time and my money, I want I want Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger. I want you to convince me you're yeah. gay. I want to watch you two ruin your they friendship. Me. Yeah, I want you two to never be able to make eye contact again. I heard Mark Wahlberg turn down the Gyllenhaal role. What? <laughs> that would have been such a good... <laughs> do, do you ever see that episode of Extras where Ricky Gervais <laughs> won't... Like, he brings all his high school friends. He's in a gay play <laughs> by Ian McKellen, and he has a kiss scene, oh, and, yes, he, yes. and he won't do it because his high school friends. That's, that's Wahlberg. Also, this. why not think about... Okay, so why is it that if you put on... A fake nose, it's Jew face. But if you get a nose job off camera, that's not anti-Semitic. Like, I was offended by Jennifer Grey. Jennifer Grey that getting was a nose job, that's anti-Semitic. Yeah. You know? No, I, I mean, who I mean, who gives a shit, though? It's like... Uh, Is that where we've gotten as a society? Like, look at his nose. Like, get... You need to do something with your time. But I don't think anyone was actually really offended. I think like once the Anti-Defamation League is like, it's nothing, then then no one really has. I saw the Jerusalem Post was like, we're good here, guys. Like the hall monitor dorks on Twitter. Like, is this? Uh, no, we're good. Okay. Yeah. He's good. And it's, it's like, as you said, he's like a clearly got a good rep as like a. Do you remember yeah. the concept of citizens arrest? Yeah. <laughs> That's Twitter now. It's yeah. the dorks that would be citizens arrest people. Right. 
the idiots are like, are you doing drugs? I'm taking citizens arrest. Like those people are just like on Twitter now. Yeah. Being dorks. It was that John Ronson book. So you've been publicly shamed. Yep, Remember that it. one? So that was good. an incredible book because he's like, that should be, you should have to prove you've read that to get on Twitter. Just <laughs> sure, so you I know that. the harm that can be You're done. Dying. Because yeah, I, I think, I think it's going away a little bit. Yeah, because for I think, sure. Because there's fatigue. And also like the shit you see people losing it over. It's like, they just move up. They went from Jonah Hill to Lizzo. There's no, right, 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 there's right, no right. tension. Yep. Their ADD is getting better to, or worse. So they just jump to the next. It's just whack-a-mole at this point. Like, But I think that people have always used celebrities as punching bags or famous people as punching bags that we just never saw before because how could we? You but know? it's also when people are sanctimonious. Like I think Jonah Hill made a movie about how like enlightened he is the from therapy. The documentary about therapy. And then, yeah. so then you do that. And Lizzo is like, I'm so body positive. And then you treat people you work uh -huh. with. Like we don't shit. like hypocrites. Exactly. I, so I think that's where, but then also how long are you going to really punish someone? I think it's really more like, I'm very grateful that that's as someone that is like identified with having a lot of addictions. I'm glad that's not like needing someone to fail or something. Like, I don't like it when someone. You're a self-loathing train wreck. No one will I ever come for you. You're safe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but that's dude, anything but that's you have to say about me. Like, I probably agree. No, no, you're you're self deprecating, and that I think I think it feels a little arrogant to be like like I I, I couldn't finish that Jonah Hill doc, and uh, and I like Jonah Hill. I'm a fan of his, but I just I don't want to watch about like I this is a great therapist, but then it kind of becomes about you and how mm -hmm. this guy's helped you, and you're kind of like it's like self indulgent. There's like the subtext is like I'm doing great now, and I and I. I just don't it really seems want to see overcompensating that. or something when someone advertises how well they're doing. And I think for comics, exactly. that's so anathema to us because our thing is like we advertise our shadow, which she talks about in that 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 documentary. Like we go, I'm a piece of shit. I make all these mistakes. I'm going to, you know, but we don't have secrets in private. Whereas yeah. I think most people, they're like, I'm well, everyone's so great. got secrets. But I think when you when you play it up like I'm a fucking I'm an enlightened per it's the whole reason we hate politicians who are like. I'm this, uh, you know, the, the guy who hates the gays is sucking cock behind a always, dumpster or something, always. you know? It's like being sanctimonious. It's always like, yeah. what are you hiding? Like, if someone's like, you know, are you a good person? I'd be like, I, I try to be. Yeah. Like, those are the people you want to trust. Not yeah. the people that are like, oh, I'm the best and I'm like moving but female. Then that, those are the people that are going to get it next. They're like, that guy's a work in progress. I don't know if he is. I don't think he's really working on himself. They're going to get more descriptive with how they go after you. Yeah, it just feels a little bit... Uh, yeah, people that want to advertise how great of a person they are. It's like Cosby 101. It's like yeah. Cosby's like the good guy that was telling other Did people. Did he do something? They... <laughs> he has an app. He has an app now. He has a legit app. The nap app? I'm down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just white noise. It yeah. just puts you to sleep. <laughs> I hate you. Oof, he is fucking... Here's a good segue. Speaking yeah. of sleep, last night, <laughs> <laughs> comedian much? Last night at like 10 o'clock, you texted me. I'm watching the documentary about the Long Island killer. And well, you watched the better one than I watched. I, I watched saw, it till two in the morning. I was watching. Well, I was shit. watching the Gilgo Beach guy, but I was it was on Hulu. I was just flipping around Hulu and it's the Harvey Levin TMZ one, which I'm like, Oh, so now these guys are like trying to take themselves seriously as like fucking journalists. Well, no, because the victims were hot. They're like, we'll do this one. Yeah, they were. They <laughs> yeah, were like, they look like stars. And, he, and the killer looks like fat, dead behind the eyes, Tucker Carlson. Dude, hundred. Yes. Dude, he's also very tall. He's, he's like 6'4", this killer. I didn't know his voice until I watched it. He sounds like pure Long Island trash. I was expecting something more. You always picture these villains to be more sophisticated nope. from like all the movies we watch and stuff. No, my favorite part about it is that, so this guy killed like eight to 10 women or something. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe more in this. And they said like maybe a kid. <laughs> there was like, and they're like, and their toddler was found. And you're like, what the and fuck? And like any guy, he's like, that kid ain't mine. You know? <laughs> Just the women, you know, but uh, no, he it but, was a midget. It was a midget stripper. It was a girl. She was hot. Um, it was wild because he was Google, I, a boomer serial killer. Like he was even shocked that he had been caught. He was Googling. Why hasn't the Long Island I killer, <laughs> killer been caught? That was one of his main Google searches. I it's know. like, why can't they find this? They're, serial they're killer? like insecure, like entertainers, but they Google themselves. <laughs> They're like, no one's talking about me. And also, no one was talking about him to the point to where he would call the families from the phone oh, of the victim. 
I mean, th there was one. I don't know if they did this in the one and you the, saw. And they were like, we don't really care. Like, he wasn't getting, like, the high he wanted from he killing was, them. He's, like, 6'5", too, and, and an oaf. And uh, he was... Uh, did you ever see that movie Manhunter from the 80s? No. Michael Mann? It, dude, it's a giant murderer who watches... Women. It's a great movie. It's, it's actually like, crazy, because sometimes when I think murderer, I go, oh, Napoleon Complex, like, short guy that needs to... And you're like, this guy's just 6'4". That's just, like you're built in a lab to be a serial killer. And you're yeah. like, I guess I got to we'll play basketball. Yeah, you don't have to be. I was just, <laughs> he's like, I couldn't play basketball. To. I'm just going to choke a bitch <laughs> that looks like a cheerleader. Like, you're just like, um, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Usually it's some squirrely ass little dude. That's not how you pick. It's almost too on the nose, right? It's almost like hack to be a serial killer when you're that. But he also was just like, it is hack. Literally. He was, yeah, he's literally <laughs> he's a, hack. a hack. He's a fucking <laughs> he's hack. Like, that's how I did it. How did Sam know? Finally, someone, he was so, uh, it's funny. They were like saying, like, he was like actually like a charming guy. No one would have saw it coming. And then you see how he behaves. They always like, say that. You're not, it's like when they said Bundy's charming. I'm like, have you never met another person? This guy's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> That's exactly it. This guy starts talking, they're like, seems like a really good guy. I'm like, no wonder all you are dead. That guy yeah. does not, he well, comes off so creepy. He's such a bummer. That's to me the part that like, it's the most, for some reason, it's so much more fucked up to kill call girls than just, like, I know. Because I'm like, it's just such a vulnerable profession. Fish such, in a barrel. Yeah, I mean, and it's like this fucking, they're like, he's so charming. Well, he couldn't get a date. He was creeping out call girls. And he was told me he's married charming. with a kid. Yeah. He also had a Two wife. Kids. So what's what's up with the serial killers that have the wife? Do you think that they stay with the wife because they know that'll be like a good cover? Ooh. Imagine being the wife of a guy who, and you find out he's killed 10 women and he's just like in your house every day. Oh my God, I get shit for leaving the seat up. Are you kidding me? I can't imagine. No, it's, uh, I can't imagine. I mean, th that's got to be a rough conversation. But it's like, why do not they me? Still, do they still say we need to talk? Yeah. <laughs> Is it the same? I don't know. Uh, it's why, because you know, Ted Bundy had a, Jenna Friedman, really brilliant comedian, had this, um, has this YouTube series. It's called, uh, whatever the girl's name, Something in Ted. And it's like based on um, she got, I think, a cease and desist from The New York Times because she was spoofing those New York Times like wedding. Things oh, I remember that. That, that was, was maybe funny, when yeah. they were like black and white, like going through the city, like talking about their marriage. And it was about um, Ted Bundy's girlfriend who he lived with when he would just come home like covered in blood. And she would like <laughs> it, it, just like be living with a serial killer. Like that would be a good sitcom. It's, it's like, so funny like, a, like a three camera, like we just play it like laugh track style. Yeah, it's just so, it, it, literally that's what she was kind of leaning into. Yeah. It's like serial killers really like to have uh, like a steady girl. It, it, that's what keeps them hating women or something. He's like, I'm not gonna be able to keep my rage up for like women if I'm not married. <laughs> yeah, if you're single, you'll be like, no, fuck it, I'll stop. Women I gotta... are cool, actually. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Damn. You know, like, do you have to, is being married what makes him need to murder these women, or do you just get married as your? That'd be comfort? a great defense. Like, look at her; she's fucking <laughs> awful. This is why he's a hack. I, did, I didn't kill her, but I had to kill someone. <laughs> so. Y'all, I'm pregnant. And there's a lot of things people don't tell you about pregnancy. People do tell you their secrets. People do come up to you and they're just like, hey, I drank my whole pregnancy. And like, honestly, the kid turned out fine. He's a little short, but the helmet makes up for the difference. Like they will just admit, they'll tell you I tore six and a half inches. Like they tell you everything except how horny you are when you're pregnant. That's the one thing nobody told me. I've heard some theories about it. One is how you get really horny so that the father or some man bonds emotionally to you so you have protection over the baby. Although, do you want the man that was obsessed with having sex with a pregnant girl to be the protector of your child? I don't know. But like, it was wild in tribal times, okay? I guess it makes sense that you'd want to get some guy attached to you to help you defend the baby from lions since they used to come out just covered in... I guess they still come out covered in blood, but there's less... I don't know. Hopefully there's no lions at Cedar sinai where I'm giving birth. Um, but so there's that. So there's like apparently a biological basis for this. You know, also, I guess being horny, it helps you give birth. Sex induces labor. I was reading about. I wonder if sex toys do. Because if so, I'm going to have this baby any minute. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the I am so late to the game on sex toys. I am so bad at myself for dabbling in antidepressants and weed and all kinds of things when sex toys were right there the whole time, okay? I just, for, for the longest, I don't know. They're the ultimate life hack, okay? You're no more, you have, you have to worry, is the sex gonna be good? 
He doesn't have to worry if she's getting satisfied. It's on you to satisfy yourself. It's 2023, people, okay? Tell them what you need. Bring the toy. Show them, okay? They'll love it. It's like a video game controller where the highest level is you squirting, okay? I have I have a whole situation now. I've gone hard on the sex toys. I have one by my bed. I got a little charging station, this is the ultimate form of self-care, I'm telling you. Stop. I don't take sleeping pills anymore, okay? Just get one of my toys from Fun Love, doze off to sleep, and not one text to a weird ex in a fit of horniness. I handle it. All these people talking about depression and try, just try a toy from Fun Love. Anxiety, try a toy from Fun Love. Tell me if you're still depressed and anxious. Honestly, every crazy person I see having a meltdown on Twitter, I'm like, you guys need to go to funlove.com. There's something to satisfy any desire at funlove.com. So what are you waiting for? Explore, discover, indulge, and make love fun by visiting funlove.com for a limited time. My listeners can save 25% off your first order by entering the code Whitney at checkout. Go to fun, F-U-N-L-O-V-E.com and use code Whitney at checkout to save 25% today. That's funlove.com and code Whitney to save and make fun love today. Who was, like, who was like a hero who you met who was awesome? Uh oh gosh, a lot. I feel like most people kind of are. Um, Paul Reiser. Yeah. So cool. Like I I like really Paul Reiser was like for he whatever reason cool. really big deal for me. Like I read his book Couplehood when I was like 12. I found like a flea market and I was like, this is how I think. Like I focus on the, the weird shit like this, you know? Um, and then he's just like the coolest, the calmest. Like he knows people freak out on him and he knows what to do to make you be like, no, I'm just a person. Like yeah. he just knew exactly what to do. Um, like Margaret Atwood, who wrote The Handmaid's Tale. Oh, like she, shit. yeah, she just like handled it and was like not Margaret Atwood after like a couple of minutes. That's cool. Have you, uh, Blake Griffin? Like there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, I forgot you're a huge, you're a hoop, you're a hoops fan. Yeah. Yeah. Like he was like, well, we work together on something and it's yeah. like, when you're just a fan of someone's work and then they just make themselves a human being, like they just know what to do. I, I met, I love Jalen Brunson from the Knicks and I met him at a game uh, uh, early in the year and I sucked. Mm -hmm. I blew, I like, totally blew it. I just, uh, I was at a Rangers game. I was with, uh, I was with Gary Veter, Liz, who's the manager at the comedy cellar. Who, I'm sure you met. Yeah. yeah and course. then, uh, and Rachel Feinstein, we were at the game and, uh, and the Knicks PR guy is like, Jalen Brunson's coming in, just so you know. Yeah. He's coming to the game. And I'm like, fucking Jalen Brunson. He's like, you should say what's up. Like, they know I'm, I'm bugging out. He's my favorite player. So uh, I'm usually cool in these scenarios, but I just sucked. I fucking, uh, I was like, thank you so much for coming to the Knicks. And he was like, oh. And then Liz had to jump in. Like, he's a comedian with a Netflix special. He's not just a psycho. <laughs> and uh, and that helped a little. I was like, man, I fuck it. He was so nice. He yeah. Like the ni he, could, you could, he is what you expect he's going to be. But there's also people we're friends with that I used to be fans of. Like, yeah. I mean, like Louis C.K. and I Colin know. Quinn and like Attell. Like, where you're like, I legitimately forgot how I used to would like freak out if I was sitting next to you, you know? Hell, uh, yeah, he's, he, I mean, they're all great guys. Yeah. New York comedy. So fucking cool. I mean, it's like, the, I miss seeing a tell. I've been calling in late because I have this damn drilling on my apartment for like a year. New York's insane, but uh, I don't, I, I look, I love New York. I would love to be the type of person that can live there without being, you could handle New York. I love it. I think for me, it's more about the what you get for your money drives me a little nuts like i'm kind of like uh really you know as most people i would imagine are is just like sort of like for what i'm paying for this this is just not a pro or like this is a bad deal of i don't course, i don't yeah. like getting screwed i was like paying like a crazy amount of money for this like one bedroom the plumbing never worked like there was an elevator that people would get off while i was sleeping in the like I, the hearing people screaming i'm like at 2 a.m a woman screaming like do i help do i go outside is this a, am i an accomplice like i just don't need that shit right now well no you know what new york is it's like a, a chick who is hot in like the 70s and then just got like really fat and <laughs> and crazy and you're like you're you gotta be nicer now you're, uh -huh. and, it, and she's gotten worse somehow uh -huh. no it's it, i think you forget she that, dances like this at the wedding like she's just like, <laughs> like too much wine, like rosé all day. She's like, I'm getting better with age, like this wine. You're like, you're not actually. That is the fucking attitude though, where you, you're there and you're just like, how do people, I don't know how people handle it. It's like Stockholm I, syndrome. Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of that. I do like a little abuse probably. But to me, like I went to New York to write my book and it worked. 
like the energy, the like, I'm in New York and I need to write. And you would go out to like get a coffee and everyone would be like in a rush and you'd be like, look at us. We're like, look how important we all are. Like, I totally like it. I'm into that sexiness of like the one day a year, the weather's good. You're like, look at that. Like it just kind of. You, it really is like two weeks. <laughs> Truly. And then yeah. everyone's outside like eating gelato, like, you know, and um, I, I like the not taking something for granted and things are always kind of hard. So when you do get like a little nibble, it's like being a toxic relationship. It's like a gambling addiction, ultimately. Yeah, we're all Rihanna with Chris Brown. Yeah. And, and when he smiles at us once a year, but we're he's like, an amazing Whoa, dancer. What a great guy. He's an amazing yeah. dancer. No, it's, it's, like, it's toxic. At the end. You're right. But there's something toxic. so sexy about it. And uh, but at the end of the day, when you're like writing that check and you're like, because there's a couple things as I, you know, that I won't budge on baths i gotta be able to have a bath yeah. and this plumber came if you flush the toilet i want to say say if the effluvium would come through the bath like the just mm. it would just be like wharf smell nice and i called a plumber and i was like oh every time i flush this toilet it'll smell like not from me pooping or anything it would just smell like sewage would come out of the sure. drain and he was like new york plumbing and I'm like, that's it? And he's like, yeah, it's 120-year-old plumbing. And you're like, so there's no solution. He's like, not really. Like, that's just it. That sounds like a bad plumber, though. Someone should be able to fix it. Was- <laughs> this dude, I, I, had, I had a plumber come by the other day. And they're, uh, sometimes you just go with what the, the building's like, we use these people. You yeah. should use them. And they have like a weird relationship. It was maybe with, like, that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I use this company. I looked them up on Google. I shit you not. It's 30 straight one-star reviews. I'm like, I've never seen this bad a rating for that anything. That feels like an ex-girlfriend pissed off. <laughs> no, but it's like, they're all like, everyone was like, the the worst plumber. But the ever. plumbing in the city is awful. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. how do you fix 20-year-old, 120-year-old plumbing? That's you know? true, but they came by, they did suck. They, I mean, they ended up fixing it, but the first day, they, got, they did a consultation quickly, but then they just didn't show up the first day. Wild. And I was like, where, you can like, get away with fucking murder in New York in many ways, but like, that's kind of- Go-Go that, Beach. That- Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for 15 Long years. Island. And then it was like to get it, everything was I think my deal is that the hard things can be hard, but the easy things shouldn't be hard. And sometimes in New That's York, true. the easy things are hard. We're like, I just got to pick up this and then I got to get groceries. And you're like, oh, I can only get so many groceries because I have to carry these home. And now my yeah, fingers deliver are the groceries. Fingers are bleeding. Every grocery store delivers now. I like getting my own groceries. This is like getting clams delivered. There's certain <laughs> things that I want to get that so I'm the, not. That's what the Go Go Beach Killer did. Some- you got clams delivered. <laughs> Craigslist. <laughs> I can't get off this one. Uh, no, but you really can. <laughs> you really can get anything delivered there. It's, I understand you want to go. I don't. To the then store. you're waiting for like I don't. I spent my whole twenties waiting for men to show up. I'm not. I spent my whole childhood. This waiting is a different for a issue. That's up. not. That's not. You I can't don't bring, like waiting you, on the bicycle guy that has my poke this, bowl. I don't know what he's doing. This is a different issue. And then there's a new thing. We're talking now. groceries, not the I'm poke not bowl. I'm not spending $5 to have someone bring me. Well, I'm not Marie Antoinette. I'm already spending fucking She four- did not have this <laughs> option to get this I'm much not, food delivered. I'm already delivered. spending $4,000 to live in like a, you know, like cheese yeah. wheel. So it's like, I'm not going to, I don't, I don't, because then you're like, where's the guy and where's the bike guy? Is that him? And then you're like, I'll, I'll give you this some days it's i i'm i i love it and i i can't leave and it's like a part of me but there's some days i go out and i'm like i cannot believe that they get away with this shit it's wild it is amazing i mean just like just a dude just in your face there was a drilling in my home so i have to leave a lot of days like it's so fucking loud it's uh-uh. literally outside no. my window uh-uh. so i have to leave and the second i go out a guy just starts screaming cursing in my face like a guy who's on fucking fedno or something he's like fuck you what the fuck are you looking this at this started you seem like the common denominator the people that yell at you yeah that people, <laughs> i was going to say i've a jew face die. just like uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bradley you cooper really do. no but he gets in my face and i'm like that so i can't be home i can't be in the street Mm-mm, can't and then he, he did that. it to a lot of people. Wasn't it? He did it to a woman with a dog. He's like, fuck you and fuck your dog. He was a crazy guy. But uh... Do you ever discover any subscriptions you forgot about or paid twice and didn't realize it till you already gave $700 to the Jenna Jameson Fleshlight Subscription Club? Ever find out that you got stoned five years ago and you did some auto subscription giving $7 a month to save pandas? Pandas? You know, you know that old save the pandas racket you fell for one night when you were feeling weak? Well, that fake panda charity was a scam. Let's be honest. And you're still dropping 400 bones a month to save fake pandas. Been there. Auto subscriptions. 
You forgot about robbing you blind? Story of my life. I realized a month ago I still belonged to like three gyms in Philadelphia. <laughs> Drives me nuts. You log into Pornhub one time to get a digital girlfriend and they're just charging you <laughs> for years. This is how they get you. Some company, what they do is they say four months free. Just put in your credit card and you'll have four months free and they bank on you forgetting. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to go in and undo the whole thing. I just want to ghost this subscription. It's like they're they're on you. It's like dating someone for four months. You just want to never talk to them again. But they think you're still together. That's what they're like. Well, you never officially broke up with me, but you knew. You knew. <laughs> you guys track everything we do. You know I haven't been on this website for, you know I just wanted one article. Ugh. <laughs> Well, fret no more. Rocket Money is here to save the day. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash Whitney. That's rocketmoney.com slash Whitney. Rocketmoney.com slash Whitney. What's the song? I have mom brain. It ain't none to cut that bitch off. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new motto. There's something very fucked up and egalitarian about New York where like even Mayor Bloomberg would ride the subway and like sure it was, like that. Sure it was a PR stunt, but it's also like it is the best way to get around. Yeah. So like there's something cool about everyone being on the same like yeah. in LA, you're just in your car for fucking you know, ever there's something so isolating about that, right? No, you listen to podcasts, you talk on the phone. It's, I would never talk on the phone if I was didn't get in the car. I talk on the phone. Yeah, I, I, I don't. You know, I don't. It makes me I like can't drive. it forces me to. Yeah, that's the other thing about New Yorkers. I'm glad you said it. You guys lack some very basic skills that's true. as people that look could survive a zombie apocalypse. I you, can't. I'd never claim to. <laughs> I'd be the first dead, no question. <laughs> I'd be doing this shit and they'd kill me. But why not drive? I have a license, but if I if you were in a car with me, you'd be like, I wouldn't, I would never want to drive someone's car who is nice to me. <laughs> Cause I will ruin it. I'll ruin your I'll break your car. So, but like New Yorkers lack, I feel like a lot of very basic skills. Yeah. I'm trying to like manners. Manners. Learn how to drive. Like, but there's something polite about having no manners. There's something very honest about having no manners. Sure, sure. Fair. It's, fair. it's being direct. Sure. Fair. I do feel like New York has chilled out a little bit, though. It feels like it's not the mob scene that it was for a while. Like after the pandemic, I went back and I was like walking around and it was like kind of like chill. And I was like, I like it here, but I shouldn't. Some cities got worse. I remember we were walking around Salt Lake City downtown and it's like a fucking video game. You feel like you're playing GTA. Yeah, yeah. Only if you get killed, you're fucking dead. <laughs> like people would, at one point, people would just run after us and we're. <laughs> I was with Gary and we just were like run, we're like we're just jogging we, we were just jogging just in like, like jeans like homeless people which is not a good look when you're jogging in shorts <laughs> it's a good look in jeans it's a fucking problem you know something bad is happening yeah um yeah, what was no, going on there just people on drugs crazy we were just we were cracking up while we were running that's we're just like, everywhere now huh every downtown got worse yeah. after COVID and yeah. drugs in this country are fucking horrible I mean it's like Everyone talks about it, but then you don't, you just don't, it's an afterthought. You don't mm -hmm. think about it until you're actually, it's in front of you and you're yeah. like, this person is suffering. Yeah. yeah they I feel was... really bad. And you have to be so, that's why they're so aggressive is like to survive on the street. You have to be like all bark. You have to yeah. Be like, ah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I was uh, the across the street from the improv. A friend of mine has a hair salon and it's also a different kind of whatever this drug is that homeless people are on now. I don't know what remix it is. Like normally like I grew up in yeah. DC at a time where it was like, you know, it was wild. Like our mayor did crack and everyone, you know, and, uh, and you can walk towards a homeless pe person sometimes and just use your, you can use your body to move someone. You know what I mean? Like if you're walking through the airport, it's like a thing. It's with, like, if you're an animal person, it's like, if you look at the person's opposite shoulder, you can normally just move them out of your way with your energy, you know? Um, so this homeless person opens the, I, unhoused, do I have to say that? Um, no. comes in and they're like ripped now, dude. Like they're I like know. cut up. Like he was in like short, short. Yeah, when did every fucking hobo get the Brad Pitt <laughs> Fight Club V? <laughs> exactly. It's insane, right? <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I'm working hard in the gym and I look like shit. <laughs> fucking and these fucking guys <laughs> look incredible. <laughs> like a machinist charges in, dude. And he looks right at me and I kind of, because my friend's, you know, scared. She works there or whatever. And I'm good with it. I'm like fight. Some fight, yeah. fight and freeze. No, I can see that. I'm always fight. 
Because if you're just calm, like it's going to usually deescalate the situation. So I got up and I was like, hey, bud, like, let's go for a walk, like walk towards him. And instead of him just instinctively kind of flinching as anyone would, having someone move quickly towards you while making eye contact, he moved towards me. Oof. And so I went in to move him and he just like went right into me. Like his eyes, I was like, this is a different drug. This is like yeah. fentanyl, meth, Adderall. They don't feel fear. There's no, it used to be homeless people were just kind of on the street, sleeping, passed out. You step over them. Now they're like doing cold plunges and, you know, I, I don't know. Like they're strong and they're powerful. Yeah, there's some, it, it is weird that it does have like an apocalypse zombie movie type vibe. Like we were in downtown Portland, Oregon. And we're like, this is dude, like fucking The dude, Last of Us or something. This, this is, is a friend not, of mine truly last night lives in Portland. And he's like, I've got to get out of there. It's, like, it's, it's crazy. Bad. Well, didn't they have, they had their own city. They basically formed their own city with no law enforcement over there. Well, I think they also decriminalized drugs. It was something where like, they're, they're not... Uh, <laughs> They have like methadone clinics and that well, it's kind of like shit. the weird phrasing where it's like not technically like legal, but it's you don't get arrested for it or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Dude, they need to reboot Portlandia now. I know. <laughs> just a different vibe. It's like, man, Fred is a fucking spear. He's just stabbing people. So in addition to being incredibly horny, the other thing about pregnancy is that you're just always at the doctor. It's a real rigmarole. You go to one doctor and they're like, you need to go to an endocrinologist. And then he's like, you need to go to a rheumatologist. So basically you're giving me five jury duties. <laughs> By the time you call the one specialist, you wait for the call back, you go to the waiting room, you're waiting naked, wearing a napkin, it's cold. It's four, it's four days of your life door to door. I'm like, I'll be dead by that. Like I'm whatever thing I have, it's way worse. I think that's why they call you a patient because you have to be very patient to get through this whole process. I'd, why does it take so long for people at the front desk to just answer the phone? Look, you knew this was the job. What do you like? What do you say you do for a living? Someone's like, what do you do? I try to not answer phones at the doctor's office. <laughs> <laughs> they should be prescribing Adderall to the women at the front desk. Not the patients. I can't get into any doctor's appointments, but thanks to ZocDoc, now I can. Okay. ZocDoc, they have more doctors than J Day. <laughs> ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated, patient reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for the ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. I am obsessed with ZocDoc. I use it and so should you. That's ZocDoc.com slash Whitney. Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Whitney. Maybe you'll find a husband or wife. I have a special coming out in November. I would rather do like 10 podcasts of cool people than like a Fallon or a, you know, whatever, because you're going to, anyone listening to those podcasts are already going to be cool. You know what I mean? I'm not having people, I'm not promoting the special with a bunch of people who are going to make- Isn't it cool to just do like back in the day, you just do one late night and uh -huh. you're like, I'm done. I was it. That now, was it. Now it's eight like, minutes. But this is, I, this has been a fun podcast, but I do feel like you do some podcasts where you're like, just, it's like a date where you just don't vibe with the person. Dude, it used to be, you could just do Leno, Letterman, you're in, you're out, eight minutes. Now I have to drive to like five guys at garages they have to like prank call my mom. I have to like talk about <laughs> being molested. I have to hear about their depression. It's it is really. <laughs> I know. I'm. You know. What I'm sick of is fucking every comedian being having anxiety. Dude, you're a per performer. You perform in front of strangers. Stopping a comic. If this is so stressful for you, it is everyone's number one fear. But uh, it's interesting. I think in the, the way we were just talking though about like the peeves and stuff. I feel like people should do that. That should be like a first date. That's how people Great. should go. Because what are people talking about? Like their interests? Like, like I like this movie. Movie, fine. Music, fine. But like. What bothers you? What bothers you on the. Why don't you ever do that in the first date? That's how you should always do No one do does it. it. Let's just. Do, there was a dating app that was just dislikes for a while. And I was, oh, is, oh, I thought you were coming up with something. <laughs> no. that, that's a real thing. I think it was because I came up with it and then I found out it was real. It's called Hater. <laughs> what? See, that's fucking. I think New that's dating smart, app though. launching February 8th. I don't know what year that was. Um, and it was just going like, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. I think maybe people it maybe didn't catch on cause like negativity, but I think like there should be a thing like deal breakers. Yeah, totally. Totally. Like bottom lines, things I can't stand. Cause I feel like you waste so much time when you're hanging out with someone, like trying to go like, look how fun I am. And I like, no, I love hiking. Like I'm canoeing my favorite. Yes, but totally sunsets. It's like, nah, dude, just get, oh, by the way, who hates sunsets? I don't know. 
If someone like, okay, I don't, I don't like that, sunsets, dude. They really fucking piss me as off. As someone that gets migraines. <laughs> we, oh God, you're one of those. <laughs> Jesus, easy mother. Can I call you mom for the rest of this? My mom would just be in the room like, I can't, I can't I, be around anyone. I've got a migraine. And when you're driving like against the sun at like 6.15 or whatever, when that. <laughs> against the sun or your son? Because I feel like I'm talking to my mom right now. And also, like, dude, sunsets my, are, are you, like... Are you, like, ice pack on the head, <laughs> laying down, just like... Menthol don't. gel. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not anymore. Since I've gone off birth control, I haven't had migraines as much. That was okay. actually, like, triggering it. Um, so we'll just have to keep getting you pregnant you know, every, every, like, year and <laughs> a half. stay yeah. a handmaid. Yeah. But, like, I do feel like sunsets piss me off because when you see them, you're like, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And you try to take a picture of it, and it's never as good. Mm. And then you, like, post it, and you're like, what am I doing? I'm like, I'm this. So don't so keep Instagram out of it. Just you know to, what, that's for you. You know when other people post sunsets, you're like, really? Yeah. It's just like <laughs> it's too beautiful of a thing. It like it bothers me. Wow, that's a fucking weird. <laughs> and by the way, you just like the migraine thing is hilarious that you that you're a migraine <laughs> person because that's like. <laughs> That's like my childhood. Is my mom just be like my head? Oh no! Do you, how, Maybe how, it's you. Maybe you're the. Guy. I'm feeling one. What's <laughs> coming on? I get why your mom lived. Like, oh my god, you're really annoying. <laughs> my mom. You know, what my mom did to me the other day. I got. A, I had like a horrible flight situation. Where and like, are you guys got, like homies? Yeah, I'm close to my mom. Awesome. But like we. But she also is like does that classic like. I call it like fucking jujitsu where it's like you just, you have to like, comp you like complaining energies. Well, I, I think want she and, like Jews you yeah, into she, a corner. It's like Jewish Tai Chi where like she takes my complaint and then wraps it. She's like, you think that's bad? I'm like, uh -huh. all right, you win. But I was complaining about a flight being delayed. I'm like, fuck it. And she's like, the airlines are struggling. I'm like, you're signing with United? You're my mom. What the fuck is wrong with you? Hate that shit, and I. Have, the airlines and, are having a hard time. They and, keep getting bailed out. They're not I, having a hard time. I'm having a hard time, mom. I love. You got me fired up. You know, I do this sometimes, do you? and I hate it when I do it. I hate it when people do it to me, and then I find myself doing it. It's like I'm trying to make someone feel better. But they just want to feel the anger. It's yeah, like, no, you got to let them feel the anger. Yeah, it's like when someone's like, uh, uh, my Instagram comments, someone just called me a whore and da da da. And I'm like, well, people are in a lot of pain. I mean, imagine how much pain you have to be in to write a negative comment about someone. And it's like, why did I do that? Why didn't I just I say, know. that sucks? I just I'm got raped sorry. by a homeless person. Well, you were his only option. You He's know what? homeless. Adversity is actually good. Like, you'll yes. get a great bit out of it. Like, I have. You'll get a great bit, is the best one. <laughs> That, by the way, that's the first thing I said to you when I saw you pregnant, right? I was like, I was like, you're gonna get a bit. You're gonna get a great joke. So yeah, why do you yeah. think I did it? I saw the bump and I was like, this is gonna be it is how much your new hour is uh gonna be almost zero. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. The new hour is like I have a couple jokes about it. Um, but like for me, like I have a really hard time not doing like a, a couple things on one thing like I because I hate segues so much like they f are so embarrassing to me that I tend to do specials that are like one big theme so you can just go from thing to thing so I feel like the next one will be just that you know because I get frustrated when I can't I remember I heard Gary Goldman once say I just love Gary and I love his work um he said like with each premise you have to and I just remember it changing the way that I think about comedy he was like you have to milk it for like everything it's worth so for me like just a couple jokes about it I like makes me annoyed yeah I mean he's amazing at that he he gets every joke I mean it's like he'll have like a 12 minute bit you know it's, it's on mangoes yeah you're like how did you well, like huh he like, milks just, the mango to death yeah dude. just from yeah. every oh yeah I remember he I saw the um I don't know if the special aired about it. He's like, mangoes have such a low yield. The, there's such a, even if only, only he would say that low the yield. The best word choice for a fucking fruit chunk. The best. I mean, he's like, yeah, he's, he's he a great like, fruit bit. fruit in the new I hour. Know. No, he's, uh, yeah, he's a great comic. He he got me in at the comedy cellar. He was my wreck at the comedy cellar back in the day. I love, love Gary. I do think a lot, like my last couple specials, I've tried to do like, like my fourth one, I did one topic, robots, pretty much the whole special. And then the last one, I had maybe two topics total. That so like, robot was crazy. Crazy. That was fucking crazy. I mean, but the, like, I look back and I'm like, was that batshit crazy? Like, it was. No, it's fun crazy. At the time, it was just like, 
why not? It's I have migraines from sunsets crazy. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's fun crazy. It's I hate the Beatles crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it was no, just... No, it was, it was funny. I like it. It was... And also it had happened at a time where that that um, special Nanette had come out where people were sort of like really torn on it. Like, is mm -hmm. it comedy? Is it not? But it was like, seemed like it was really popular. And what ended up happening is I guess at the end, she talks about getting sexually assaulted. Yeah. She, am I misidentifying? I probably. Um, and uh, people would say, oh, did you see the end? Did you see the end? Yeah. And people go, no, I haven't it seen was like, it. It was like the crying game. You had to stick <laughs> around for the last. <laughs> people go yeah. literally and people go back and watch it. Yeah. And then I heard from someone at Netflix, we can get people to start specials. We can't get them to finish them, mm. which I still think an hour is a long time. You know, I agree. You know, the one that I'm doing, uh, my next special, I might do it as like a half hour. Like I feel like podcasts, people want to hear you. They're always like, that was too short. But with specials, I feel like they're so dense. Like this, I feel like people can throw on in the background, but stand up requires all of your attention. Mm -hmm. So I think they the special has to be like 50 minutes. Yeah. And then, but the reason there are six have to be over 60 for like Netflix and stuff is to, in order to qualify for an Emmy, it has to be over 60 oh, minutes. Really? Yeah. So there's well, like, that's not something I'm really worried about. Well, no, I mean, it's like whatever, like, are we trying to get, it's like what we said at the beginning about this thing. Are we all just trying to get trophies or are we trying to make people laugh? You know, it's yeah. like, I'm trying to get another fucking weird like thing to have on, you know, but, um, uh, so I was like hearing that and I was like, okay, like, and I try to be, smart about that you know i try to not just be like people were gonna watch it because it's me and you know everyone's attention span no, it's good to have a hook i think and it wasn't even like planned it was i was actually like let me do so much research on this that i actually like earned the right to make this whole special about this and i went down there and i was getting one made just to go through the process just so that i could write jokes about it and then i thought it would just look like some shitty scarecrow and just be something i would use like in the promotion or on like the poster i was really making it for the poster i was just like oh the whitney robot will be the poster cuz i'm like i don't know what no, to do no it looked it looked very lifelike i don't know what to do in stand up comedy posters like i was trying to outsource it so that i didn't have to just be like looking at the camera like holding a beach ball or something like it's just i never know what expression to have like yeah. in a stand you know Comics, you always have to be naked. Female comics are always naked in their posters. Like their first yeah. couple, they're naked, like holding a microphone over their tits or something. Like there's no cool way. So I was like, I'll yeah. just make this. She'll be the poster. It'll be funny. And then it ended up being kind of amazing. I didn't realize the technology was so good. It's crazy. And then yeah. I was like, let's just have her come out at the end, see what happens. And then I had her come out in La Jolla and the audience reaction was so fucking cool because it was like, we can get laughs, we can get applause breaks, but people were like, like scared and fascinated and riveted and I was like I like that like were you worried that it was gonna be like an ex machina and it could have turned on you and killed you <laughs> it still might be one I yeah. mean it, I liked seeing like the different reactions from everybody and I was like oh I like this like comedy horror like vibe you know I like how it is comedy and horror I mean it's it, it's such a good marriage because it's both just build tension and then release right 100 percent. like that's why i think a movie like Shaun of the dead is so cool love so get out like get out all, is incredible yeah Shaun you, of the dead's genius. are you worried about this ai shit um yes and no you robots aren't gonna have this chemistry we're fucking this is this is we're rolling well like it's here's the thing i mean yeah. I, this is as of whatever the date is august 22nd 2023 like when people are like i'm worried rob AI is going to write scripts. Yeah. If you're worried AI is going to write your script for you, you probably weren't writing very interesting scripts is my guess. Mm. Like, if, But if they just want to bang out these things that are just going to be like the sort of generic romantic... There's a lot of generic... Have you seen Suits? Oh, right. How was that not written by AI? It's By the way, there are some things where you're like, this was made 10 years ago and it feels like it was written by a robot. He I went know. to Harvard. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of like comedy writers in LA are fucking dork sociopath robots. Yeah. And because now, uh, like the problem with what's going on with scripted comedy, why it's, it's so bad right now is that it used to be like, okay, we're going to make eight episodes. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to make eight seasons of a show, whether it's The Office or 30 Rock or whatever. And it was and 24 episodes. 24 episodes. Yeah. And we make it for America and then we export it all over the world, right? You wait for syndication and then people go, oh, this is the biggest show in America. They watch it. Whether they get the jokes or not, it doesn't really matter. Now it's instantly all over the world. So instantly I need this joke mm. to work in India and in China and, you know, the South America. And that's going to make it much more generic, much less specific. Right. You're not going to do the jokes in the office where it's like you're going to Chili's and driving a PT Cruiser. And you know what I mean? Like, 
that sort of like really specific comedy goes away. Yeah. So they go, okay, this this show's not doing well on Hulu. It's like, well, maybe if it was just for America, it would have. But now it's like I have to make it work all over the world. But AI kind of does that. So I think for like television, it's going to move way. We always do with South Korea. We're always like a little bit behind. It's going to be like game shows. It's going to be like, you know, regular people you know, like doing stunts and falling into water if they can't jump on the lily pad or whatever the f these shows are, we, like competition shows that cost nothing. And like with who now owns like these conglomerates owning television, they're going to go, it's succession is going to be, it's going to come true. They're going to go, okay, Love is Blind makes, you know, it costs $10,000 per episode and 50 million people watch it. Succession right. is the best show, maybe like you know on TV. I love it. Yeah, three million people watch it. It costs twenty million an episode. Like it's got to go. We don't care about art. Well, hopefully you can make both. I mean, hopefully there's a way to you know because that's the shit that that's the shit I revisit. Like I just keep rewatching Sopranos or Mad yeah, Men yeah. or shows that are like really well written. I, I that's uh, and well acted. Everything about those shows were great. But and that happens in literature too. It's like you read the classics. Like we'll just right. start rewatching the classics and stuff like that. And the stuff that's good will stay good. But like stuff that but like I think it's background stuff. People are now consuming more and more background stuff. Yeah. Like I don't have to pay. I don't have to give my. I'll fold laundry while I do this. Yeah. I used to have a joke about how I would be like folding laundry while watching like nine straight law and order SVUs. You know, like that's how desensitized you are. You <laughs> yeah, watch yeah. like nine rape episodes. Yeah. But, but that's like, uh, but that's, you know what it is. And, and uh, I, being at the mercy of this weird, like kind of algorithm now too, I just saw Joe List post today that his special was getting demonetized and buried because he said the word cunt in it. And you're like, On YouTube? oh my God, yeah. YouTube's over. Yeah. We're so, I know, we're so like at the mercy of these weird algorithms. And I say this like, so I'm going to OnlyFans TV, like true, like for real. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's kind of the only place you can kind of really do uncensored comedy now. I mean, you can't say the word vaccine on YouTube. I mean, that, that'll we'll have to like bleep that. You know, it's like for you can't say QAnon, even if you're saying like QAnon. I, isn't that crazy? And then also it's like a, we're dealing with now we're talking about, okay, yeah, we're dealing with like robots that can't detect sarcasm. Mm -mm. So like we're talking about pedophilia jokes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they can't say in like, mm -mm. you know, like Louie had a joke back in the day where he's like, we should never rape a woman. He goes, well, unless you want to fuck her, her and she, she won't, won't have, have sex, sex with, you. with you. Like you only get that's a joke that's if right. you get that's a joke. Totally. You don't get that. You don't get that if you're a robot. And we've all like by law, we're supposed to be protected by satire and parody and all yeah. these things. And like, it's the intonation of how you're saying something and whatever. So like, that's all like that nuance has been lost. Like, but also like just free speech in general. Like if someone's, you know, YouTube has kind of become a kids network. Like the, the, I know. there's so much money in the kids shows on YouTube and stuff. And now it's like legitimate. Uh, opening gifts. It's like the it, unboxing yeah, shows. To totally. But it's also, maybe you can raise your kid to be like an unboxer on YouTube. <laughs> oh my God. What is this? Peppa Pig on DVD. <laughs> 50,000 views in 10 minutes. But it's also um like, when we started on YouTube with doing podcasts and stuff, we weren't getting Buick advertising. It was like Blue Chew and like Dick Pills and like yeah. like Cannabis Lube. And now it's like Toyota, you know? So they right. basically go through a transcription. You have Toyotas in it? No, a I'm saying if you like, that's a goal, you know? Yeah. Like you would want to. And if they can't put Toyota in front of your thing, like what are they doing? I still, I feel like we still have like ball clippers, you know? <laughs> I feel like our ads are still like, do you have good enough ball clippers? And uh, I know, I just got like some crazy That's the greatest thing about podcasts. I guess, by the way, we're like, we're like, we, this is, and this is what we have to do about free speech. Uh, sheath underwear. Sheath, I, which by the way, I, wear, I do wear every day, but it is hilarious that we have these like intense, but that's stand up. It's like, you'll be trying to have these, like this heady premise and then you're doing it as people are like getting fucked up on like blue electric lemonade. We are the warriors lemonades. defending free speech. So China does not take over our country. Brought to you by Blue Chew. Promo code Whitney. <laughs> This is how you have an erection. I've friend. never done a dick pill. I've never tried really? it. Really? I feel like I should just try it. You should definitely I'm running out of steam. It. I should probably need one any day now. You the yeah. blue chew is like a it's just like a quick chew. Yeah. You know? Is the idea that you can ejaculate and keep having sex or that you can just get hard in the first place? Well, at my age, I would hope just to, you know, keep going. But I think <laughs> at some point, you know. Yeah. Or like maybe it's just psychological because I think like a lot of times when guys can't perform, it's just because they're worried they won't or let's just stop that cycle. Um, no, I think you just fucking, I don't know. I, I think, uh, wow, this got fucking heavy. <laughs> dude, I'm ED fucked in the head, is, dude. Sorry. <laughs> ED, I guess, is like a very... Slippery no, I don't stuff. have it. I was trying to make a joke, but no. now I feel like this got like a serious. <laughs> no, I'm like a serious. 
<laughs> so tell me what? No, but like, isn't is it when you drink alcohol? Does that mess it up for real? Or am I? No, just I ugly? usually jump starts it actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. What? Oh my god! No, that's like better. You I love it drinks. when you hear finally figure out later in life that guys have lied to you. Like I was in a writer's room once, and um, and I was like, oh, you know what we should do? We should do a story about how like you know how like like a lot of guys are allergic to latex and they can't use condoms. <laughs> like all the guys were like. Ugh, like, do is we that how you her? got in this predicament right here? <laughs> I can't, Whitney. I'm sorry. I'm like, I, you know how, like, if guys drink too much water, they can't get erections. You know how, like, that's like a thing. <laughs> <You're> like, mm. <laughs> there got to be a lot of water, but I bet. It's, I bet there's a point. <laughs> but when guys like whiskey, dick, I guess I. That's. I think that can kind happen. of. Yeah, it's more or cocaine is bad. I've never done for erection. Neither have I. Yeah, that's so. No one believes me. How I believe you. When I was a kid, I knew a kid who just did a shitload of it and he jumped out of like a 30 story building and landed on a car. And I was like, so you not didn't my want, drug. You didn't want to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he went out with a bang for sure. I, and then also I just had like a good coach growing up who was like, who just scared me shitless on it. Cause he knew I liked to drink and he's like, drinking's cool, but fucking Coke. Fuck that. I love eighties coaches. <laughs> oh, he was, dude, his, he had the voice of George Carlin. He was so funny. He would call you pussies. He was like the funniest, oh, yeah. but, uh, yeah, no, Coke scared me. I just thought it was like, and also like that Lem Bias story is like, I know it's like a freak accident. You know, the basketball player, he just had a bad reaction to it and dropped dead. He was supposed to be like Jordan's Jesus. nemesis. The Celtics drafted him and he's celebrating. Heart attack or something? Some like walls breaking or something. Yeah. It, drugs that fuck with your heartbeat scare me a little also, bit. Also, sometimes it like has glass in it. I mean, yeah. you get the wrong, like, and I feel like we missed our window because now with fentanyl, now you, don't you fucking just do can't. It. Yeah. You know, although, I... Although now this would make a good podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we get coked up well, on dude, fentanyl. I, I was, we were doing for a second live podcast and I was like, let's do every episode. I'll do a drug I've never done like that. This is not, <laughs> Whitney, this is not sustainable. <laughs> no. Someone, someone who was a drinking podcast. Whitney, this is a bad <laughs> idea. To... Jealous. Don't want competition. <laughs> uh, yeah, we yeah. did mushrooms and then, yeah, that's as far as we got. There used to be a show and I think it was at UCB where there would be like four improv groups and since improv is intolerable, they had to do something. And uh, one was on mushrooms, one was on weed, one was drunk and one did cocaine it was actually pretty fun to watch that's pretty funny <laughs> yeah was, doing coke holy mm -hmm. shit and you would watch each of the improv groups and then they would all switch teams and be on one team together it was just like a chaotic shit show getting was, drunk can be fun i mean i won't do it a lot at live shows but sometimes when the crowd's loaded i'm like fuck it i'll have a few drinks and i'll see what happens you know when it's enough to just be like warm and fuzzy and energized it's great but as soon as you're like wait did i already say that joke I know. That's my, that is my nightmare. I have heard, there's, I don't want to say who the comic is, I don't want to embarrass them because it was online, like a, a comic that was doing drugs and repeated a, the same, just went into the same bit they had already done. And they posted it? It might be on YouTube. I think someone else might have. Oh. I'll tell you afterwards and you'll be able to tell me. Yeah. But my nightmare, haven't you ever done a joke and then you're doing yeah, and then you tell it a third time though, and they laugh again. Yeah, just fucking own it. <laughs> it's actually you know? genius. Yeah, you just keep going. No, I remember that used to happen all the time. Remember when you're doing those like, like Zany Chicago or or St. Louis Funny Bone, they'd make you do three yeah. shows Saturday and like oh, yeah. three hour long sets. You're gonna repeat a fucking joke, and uh, yeah, I mean it, it happens. Or just not knowing if you've done it. Like there's times you're doing it and you're like, "Have I done this?" And then it ends up sucking because you're like a half skittish about it, it. Even worse is when you're like, "Did I do that one?" They're like, "No, we just thought it sucked. That was just a bad <laughs> joke." And you're like, oh, right. like just like that's my nightmare, or like. I was on stage the other night and being pregnant, you're kind of just drunk. You're just clumsy. You're just like, it's just weird. And I do this joke where my Do you feel like people are nicer to you because of that? People are prouder of me than I've ever really? felt. It's like people are like, oh my God. Like I just literally lied there. I, I did. And really? I'm like, you didn't have this reaction with my last special. Didn't have this reaction. Anything I've actually achieved. Yeah, you put a lot of work in. Yeah. They're, this is that it's creepy how happy people are for me. Weird. Oh, I, I was happy. I mean, you know. And it's, a, it's good. I'm happy for people too, but I think, I don't know. It's, it's a weird kind of attention. I don't, I'm kind yeah. of weirdly shy. About yeah, because we don't, because comics are weird about like birthdays. And so we don't throw like big, anytime a comic throws a big birthday for themselves, I'm like, you're not getting enough. I, 
Mark Norman, I, I was like, I I understand you. He didn't want to do his vows publicly oh, in front yeah. of people for his wedding. Same thing when I was engaged. I was like, I'm not doing sincere vows in front of a bunch of my comedians. You've lived friends. like live for like a, you know, like you were engaged. Mm-hmm. You have a baby. I mean, this is like, that's intense. But yeah. you're not, but you'll never get married, right? <sighs> I mean, the, the one thing, I'm going to say something, which is like, I'm finding that sometimes you become what you, hate so i'm trying to not hate anything or be Mm. too negative about something because usually that means like it's some form of resistance that feels too attached or something i'll never say that i'll never become the gilgo beach murderer in the future (laughs) like anything can happen you know i don't want to be you know but but like like i i can see myself go in five or ten years being like you know what would be cool to like Get married. married. Yeah, because, that's like at a certain point that's gonna be taboo for you. Yeah, because it's like yeah. no, it's like missionary being kind of hot now. You know, you're kind of like, you know, it'd be sick yeah. just like lying down. <laughs> it's gonna be like the new like New York magazine out, uh, yeah. anal, <laughs> in marriage. <laughs> like just something because there's something when people stop doing it, there's gonna be I'm gonna be like, let's do this because no one else will do it. There's something no to one's me, ever gonna, they're never gonna stop. Uh, they're never gonna stop. But to me, there's something kind of punk rock about being like, you know what we should do? Like, put each other in a cage and sign a document with the government. Like, what? There's like, something kind of punk rock about being pregnant and just going out and doing sets, I think. Yeah. That's kind of badass. <laughs> no, every time I see Rosebud at the cellar, I'm like, that's just kind of fucking cool. Or she'll, I see like a like a road pic of her, like, you know, doing the road. Pre- I, I just always think it's cool. I don't know. You guys are like doing sets pregnant. I don't know. It is. I I, I don't. I didn't. When people are like, oh, you're out. I'm like, oh, am I supposed to be at home? Like, am I? I no, of course not. Uh, but it's still cool. It's still like, oh, you're dealing with this and you're still doing your thing. Yeah. I just think we so think about like, uh, you know, you just think about like, t- I, and you're gonna have to take some time off once you have the baby. Yeah, yeah. That'd be hilarious if you're like, the second you get birth, you're like, you know, <laughs> Magoobie's Comedy Club this weekend. I'm... <laughs> McGooby's joke has <laughs> five <Goobies>. shows. Penguins, <laughs> Pittsburgh. <laughs> but no, you got it. You got to take some time off. But it's yeah, it's cool. Is yeah. that Monkey Forty Seven Gin up there? No, that is a vintage um, bottle from Etsy. That's a mammary substance. Oh, yeah. But I think I have that downstairs. That's a good gin. Yeah, it's a really good one. It I don't know any. I don't think I've ever had gin in my life. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. But wait, speaking- never had Negroni. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Good cocktail. I like the classic Don't say that cocktail. too fast, Bieber. Um, but getting married, like, I I, yeah. I, I don't want to slam people that do it. Like, I, I know what it's like to want security. Like, I look at 30 tour dates next year, and I'm like, oh, that must be what other people feel from, like, knowing they're married. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, your just, career is your marriage. I, or just, like, that sounds so sad. Um, but No, it doesn't. I relate to that. But I, mean, I know what it's like to really need security. And I go, oh, my. Fe-. But I saw four divorces by the time I was 19 years old. Like, maybe I just like it's wired as like, this feels scary. Like, the damage will be worse when we break up if we do it this way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I just relate to that a lot because I just also am like very career oriented. And, and I've, I've every time I've had like a breakup, I just like dive headfirst back into the career. And I'm just like, well, this will this will be my thing. I mean, I still obviously this focus. can't break my heart. Yeah. yeah, this won't ruin shit for me. I, yeah. this, and then, of course, you're like showbiz. Of course, it could ruin my fucking life. I mean, this is yeah. also yeah. If, if you're it's... if you're looking for showbiz as a, an anti rejection place, yeah. then you're fucked. Maybe it's like the public show of it because yeah. I there's when you get marry someone, there's such a you have to see the ring. You have to talk about it. You have to like set all these like really high expectations. You have to have this big party. You have to it's like hack. that. I'm like, if we don't tell anyone about it and just do it, maybe that's going to take the pressure Well, you as a comedian, if you do something that's so just like pre-written, you have to at least go your own way. It's almost yeah. like, this is a bit that's been done before. Yeah, that's how you look at it, right? It's been done. Yeah. It's unoriginal. It's unoriginal. <laughs> You're fucking, yeah. But it also feels like an amount of attention and pressure that isn't sustainable. You know what yeah. I mean? And I just like, I think comedians we tend to set ourselves up for disappointment or like manage our expectations. We're like, okay, this yeah. is how life is. This is what it actually is. Okay, the Barbie came out. It's good, but like we're the ones that just kind of go, let's not get carried away here with the enthusiasm and the happiness because this is how life really works. Like I think that like the idea of getting like swept up into this like fantasy just feels really emotionally dangerous. Yeah. Or thinking right. it's going to solve any problems or like fix me in any way. 
Yeah, I think that's a dangerous uh, pressure to put on a relationship too, right? Yeah, that's but, what it kind of feels but, like. But I also think it always gets, like there's a honeymoon period and then it always kind of gets a little worse. Mm -hmm. so, I, so then you're like, okay, let me sign a fucking lifetime contract for a thing that I'm, I think is maybe peaked. Yeah. <laughs> You know? Well, it is interesting, like, when you're like, okay, half of all marriages end, like, if half of all planes crash, like, would you ever get on a plane? Sure. But, like... Probably. I got to get to the Magoobie's Joke House <laughs> this weekend. Yeah. But I do think there's something about going, like, you know, like, for my friends, they get trepidations about it. It's like, yeah, but you can also get divorced over fucking Zoom, like, you know, now, like, maybe you get married and divorced. Like, how much worse is getting divorced than a breakup if you're just gonna, like, take what you left with? I don't know. Once kids get involved, you're married anyway. Nick Griffin's got that great bit. It's like a breakup is like getting scratched by a cat and a, and a, and a divorce is getting raped by a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Geraldo used to have a joke. He was like, yeah, I don't know um, if you should get married or not. I just know every 10 years I have to give away half my stuff. Oh, <laughs> it's just like God. such a good... When you look at it, it's like I have to give away half my stuff. I think what it is is more I've seen so much irrational, really awful behavior in a divorce. Like I grew up being in a divorce, like yeah. having to go to court and watching parents like fight over furniture and scream at each other and break into each other's houses, taking stuff. And it just is like, is this what it brings out in people? I no, look, there's a lot of good marriages. I see people who like have a good, like there's highs and lows, but there's people that have stability and a mm -hmm. partner. I don't feel like I've ever really had stability or peace yeah. in a relationship for that long. Yeah. But then, you got to look at yourself and be like, well, maybe this is what I'm seeking out. This yeah. is what I'm pursuing. So you have to, you know, look at your own shit too. Here's what's not cute. In your late 40s, 50s saying- I thought you were going to be like in your life. Here's what, that, here's what I don't <laughs> no, like about no, you. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. The thing that's not cute is in your late 40s and 50s saying my boyfriend or my girlfriend. That's true. And that's when it's like- Because you say my partner, they're like lesbian. Uh, like gay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah. No, there's nothing you could really say. No, it's like, that's when you're like my girlfriend and you're like, bitch, you're 52. Like, huh? <laughs> what? That would be so funny to just say to someone. That's just embarrassing. Just a, just a person checking your ticket. Shut up, bitch. Yeah. like <laughs> You're a stupid bitch. <laughs> like, that's like wow. a rough one. I don't know. I, I, I know that in some states, like there's like benefits, like you make, save money in taxes and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. When the government starts paying you to do something, that's when I'm like, hmm. I just think like you lose, this is going to sound really sad, but you lose any power once you get, I almost feel like you're kind of, you're almost like giving up. So are you saying that like, this if, is a really, I really, I realize I have a really unhealthy outlook on relationships. I know I, you're being, this is what we do. And my comic. parents, I think a lot of people are have listening to this being like, oh, that's exactly how I feel. I had to do it anyway. Or like, I don't know. All the know. comments are like, you two are broken. <laughs> You're broken <laughs> fucking people. I love that. That's you think people are like, we're really reaching everybody here. I go the other way. I'm like, I, everyone thinks I'm a fucking lunatic. Uh, no, but, this is yeah. what comics do. Like we say, exactly. you know, it's like, I mean, I made a TV show about how scared I was to get married and I didn't yeah. want to get married. You know what I mean? So it's like, now I'm just trying to go like, I see the benefit of it. I just don't ever want a man to stay with me because they feel obligated. That's my nightmare. Mm. Like, I don't ever want to trap someone and if someone wants to leave, like, go. Like, please don't, like, I never want okay, someone... I'm, I'm going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm having a great time. No, I really am having fun. I never I, want someone to feel guilty or trapped. I think if I married someone, I'd be like, you can leave whenever you want. Just, you know, like, I won't, I don't want anything of yours. Like, don't feel obligated. I, I totally, yeah, I think that would make me feel more at ease because I feel suffocated from, like, nothing. Yeah. But I also think... um, yeah, I think we live these like weird, reckless lives, like on the road all the time. Like, think about how like cops live and stuff. There, there, there's so much excitement in a, in a, in their lives, there, and I mean good and bad excitement, obviously. Or like a fireman. Yeah, I think com comedians just doing the road where we obviously it's not as brave as what those do, but ah! <laughs> you know what? We get attacked more. I did at this a pussy for a joke the other <laughs> night, and it was pretty brave. <laughs> Uh, I hate no. oysters at a comedy club. There's <laughs> nothing braver. Yeah, that was pretty fucking brave. <laughs> but no, but but there is something about like the rush of what we do. It mm -hmm. is like try going to sleep after doing a set. There's a fucking rush. I mean, there. Yeah. So I think then going back to this ordinary situation is very. It feels almost like scripted and predictable. There's like 
check But it's like finding someone who's not like, you know what I mean? Sure, but don't you feel like even if you find them, there's like scripts you have to go through, like mm. making the check-in call. Well, there's I feel like so marriage, fucking... the whole point of that is we don't have to do that shit anymore. It's like, well, I married you. I'll talk yeah. to you. I'll, I'll see you when I see you. Yeah. Like, we're married. You live in like, you know what I mean? So I think it probably goes either way. I think it's like things either get, okay, we don't have to do this maintenance shit yeah. to make the other person feel secure because we already have this thing. Or it gets more like we're married now and we have to make sure that we're working on this and you need to be checking in because you're my husband. And now we have all these these like rules and expectations. I would hope that it would be the we're married. So like, I'll see you when I see you. I picked yeah. you. You picked me. We should be able to both breathe a little bit. I think that's a big reason, though, people have kids and they have like get pets. I think you need new things to bring in to yeah. keep it exciting. You go on a trip. You do. I mean, that that's life. That's yeah. it's good to do that. It's, yeah. Uh, but. um. I think that a lot of people go through life going, always looking for an upgrade. They're like, yeah. I'm with this person until I like outgrow them or an upgrade comes along. That should be part of the marital vows. <laughs> Caveat. <laughs> yeah. Or until, until yeah. death or until. My guess is probably yeah. being, doing the married part doesn't have a ton of bearing on whether people stay together or not. I think people are going to break up and stay together. Well, clearly not, right? With or not. You know what I mean? I think it's just a matter of I think like, kids, a lot of the time, people stay together for kids because I think... Sure. But then that can be a huge mistake, right? Because... I think the you biggest know. mistake you make is going, I love you, I want to marry you, and then you drop $100,000 on a wedding, and then you guys are like, we don't have any money, and now all we do is fight about the fact we don't have any money because we spent all this money on this party to prove to everyone how in love we were instead of just being in love and Got doing 100 this. 100 grand on, a, on, a, or whatever. on one night. No, it's crazy. By the time it's like wedding, dresses, parties, all the honeymoon, all that stuff, like that to me just adds more and more pressure. And I'm like, how about we That's my point. save so you all do, this money? This incredible night at the wedding, you go on this honeymoon, and then you just hang. Mm -hmm. It's like you built it up. So I understand yeah. the, the honeymoon. I understand why you do it. But you're just, you're going to like 10. And then yep. you go back home and you're at what? Three and a half. Yeah. Now we're just what? Going to stare at each other in Crocs. It's like. I, now yeah. we're going to watch Queen's Gambit or something. I think, yeah, it's I think like, if there was a way that was just like, let's just keep I this chill. I should have done a more updated reference there. <laughs> guy, guy who just referenced the show from five years ago. You just go home and you no. watch Suits. No, but I feel like Queen's is Gambit is the perfect reference because yeah. you're kind of like, well, I haven't watched it, but we're married now, so I guess we, we should, should get around it. to it. We have to we have to finish Netflix. We have yeah. to watch all of the things. I'm like, I'm like you just get married and you watch uh, Burn Notice. <laughs> Guy just references <laughs> old ass shows. So uh, we get married, then we start watching Castle. Like what? <laughs> I get, honey, I guess it's time to <laughs> sit down and finally watch Boston Legal. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> but like that's. I think there's. Here's what I'll say. I think the opposite, this whole thing where everyone's like, I'm polyamorous and like, not, like that's a whole other dysfunction. Yeah. And do you, what do you think of that? I think it's a total like the sham. It's people. I get the fuck five people justifying their sex addiction or their they don't you don't want to be with that person. And that's totally fine. And you can't be alone. And just and there are those guys who have like five girlfriends. But no. then they all, oh, you know, no. Mormons, no, you're starting a cult with people that are insecure. Like no healthy person wants to be in that. And the fact that you disguise it as this like forward thinking thing where I agree. I'm like, it's like socially constructed that monogamy. I'm not saying you have to be with the person forever, but this thing where you need to date four people at once. Like, first of all, get you're unemployed. Like who has time for that? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just, um, once I think, a guy starts quoting the animal kingdom as like a reason <laughs> he should get the fuck a bunch of yeah, chicks. Totally. And, like, and like talking about like in tribal times, yeah. this is how our dicks were curved and that we are supposed to scoop out the semen. And that's why I'm going to need to go to Coachella and fuck a bunch of people. Oh, a curved dick. That sounds yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> just cheat like a normal person or like set this person free because yeah. I feel like whenever there's like an open relationship one person is always uh, a victim. into it and one person is always like on How just went on Lexapro and is trying to get through it it's never like yeah we're both into this I don't get how see i understand like maybe women are okay with that sometimes as a dude if i was in an open relationship and i just saw her every time i saw her phone vibrate i'd be like what are you doing mm -hmm. like what is that I would, I'm not secure enough at all. I just, I don't. Has a guy ever proposed that to you? I think it's gross. <laughs> yeah. I also think it's gross. 
You know what I mean? Um, I also value self-control. I think that's hot. Yeah. And so someone that's just like, I'm in this thing, but I'm also gonna like, it's just like, go do that then. Cool. Yeah. Like, um, no. I think guys know better than to yeah. step to me with some bullshit like that. I had a woman propose it to me once and I was like, do you actually want that? And she was like, I think she thought I wanted it. I think a lot of I of a lot of guys that I know are like, my girl proposed this thing. And I'm like, I think it means she thinks she's gonna lose you mm. or is trying to get some rise out of you or test you or something. Yeah. I don't buy it. That's a, it's not a good idea. Like, do you want if you're like, yeah, no, it's a no. I just think break up. Break like if up. you're gonna, if you want to fuck other people, just break. But also, up. what kind of person is gonna fuck you when you have a girlfriend? Like, what kind of person is that? Not a good person. Just get a sex worker. I mean, yeah. just truly, it would be like if you're no longer attracted to me, want to stay with me, and you have these urges, and you think you're gonna act out, like just do something transactional. Like we can have that conversation. Yeah. But the idea of like courting someone, dating them, and being like, well, my girlfriend's at home, want to hang? It's like the kind of person you're gonna that those plenty of fish you're going to reel in. It's like what they say in AA about, um, I love this when guys, are you in AA? No, no. Oh, okay. I'm in like ACA Al-Anon, which is like the version of when By you, the way, I know you're not in AA. I don't know why I asked you that when I, it's okay. Yeah. But, you're in Al-Anon, but the audience might've been thinking it. Yeah. So you know, um, yeah. yeah. So it's like the program for, if you grew up around alcoholism, yeah. but I know what it is. they say in yeah. AA is, um, you know, when someone comes to AA and is like, she's cute. It's like the odds are good, but the goods are odd. Ooh, is what they say. Good. You know, it's like guys. It's just like you know about like if a girl wants to date a guy with an AA. An AA I know, but don't you always kind of want to fuck someone you shouldn't fuck on some level? I mean, not really, but kind. Yeah. I mean, that's what porn is. That's porn how is, we're designed. You're I not think, supposed to fuck your best friend's. I mom. think we all. Every time you scan by someone, you're like wood smash, wood smash, wood smash. But it's just like your subconscious. Like we're just designed to be like yes, no, yes, no, probably, maybe, like in a different world. Why not? You know, and like, that's how Tinder took off. That's the, the <laughs> that's like every movie's got a biopic, like the making of, like right. They just did Blackberry. <laughs> they just did Flaming Hot, the Flaming Hot Cheetos movie. They did uh, Air. The, the making of it. That's the new genre, by the way, is just capitalism. That's oh, the film no, it's genre. it's my favorite. And then the KFC movie with uh, Mario Lopez. He played Colonel Sanders. And no, it was, he didn't. yes, it was. It was paid for by KFC. They're going to start sponsoring Who played Chick fil A, Screech. This is also, <laughs> this is also going to move into yeah. um, uh, everything. It's, it's going to start being like Taco Bell. Can you pay a million dollars an episode for a TV show? It's starring Sam Morell and he works at Taco Bell and they'll I, pay for all of it. I, I like. I know it's just what well, dude Barbie is Mattel. That's, Everyone acts like this it's a fucking yeah, corporate yeah, yeah, yeah. They act like movie. it's like an original. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh I also really quick about the polyamory. I don't know one person that's polyamorous that's not on mushrooms. Oh, that's an interesting point. It's not like sober people being like, This is a good idea. That it's rejection like, too has gotta suck because you're like uh you're not just getting shut down by people. Yeah. You're getting like, you're a creep and I'm shutting you down. Yeah, but it's like the, we're all plants, people. Like, we're all one vagina, one dick. We should all just be fucking each other. It's like, yeah. I don't know. And those people usually aren't on birth control. It just feels like, like, um, it's in theory, it sounds fun, but it's just immature. no way to live. It's, it's literally like living off Taco Bell. It's like, it's great. Like the idea, like, wow, that looks great. Uh -huh. and, but then like, you finish it and you're like, uh -huh. I fucking hate myself. But then you're in it's a situation where you're like, did you have sex with someone today? Because I'm not now. I, the spontaneity of like, let's just have sex anytime, any place, up against a wall in this car. It's sort of like, wait, but today did you? Do you need to get tested? Okay, exactly. I think you need to show me your paperwork, bitch. I exactly. Are you one of those? I, yeah, I'm one of those. <laughs> Yeah, I'm one of those neurotic ladies that doesn't want to get AIDS. I'm one of those people who's like, could you, if you're not going to have sex with me with a condom, could you do me the decency of not giving me chlamydia or hepatitis C? I'm you, one of okay, those let me ask you this. nightmares. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you need to actually see the paperwork? Yes, I need to see you the paperwork. So you would, nope. you would fuck someone nope. you don't trust? I need to see your paperwork. I am full. I know a guy who can fake that. I... I am the government of China when it comes to STD tests. I need to yeah. see it. I need to see the nurse that signed it. Really? Yes, I need to see it all. <laughs> I have gotten this far without getting anything. I'm really? not Good about to you. start now. I yeah. know. Well I got done. the I got the Must be nice. <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, I have a lot of migraines, but nothing else because I stress out so much about guys' STDs. Yeah, because you always have a headache, so you never fuck anybody. <laughs> I'm not in the mood. I have a headache. You just jerk off on me. And the one time I didn't get knocked up. But I... I got the the shot for what's the HPV. I by some miracle, I had no money in my 20s. I had no health insurance. I was selling clothes at Buffalo Exchange and I had two hundred dollars. I went into the OB um, because I always thought razor burn was herpes. And I would go in and be like, what's this Whoa. with this? And she's like, that's not that. But you should get the hepatitis. I'm sorry. HPV shot. What does that stand for? I don't know. Um, I forget. And I had to do three shots and I didn't have health insurance. So it was out of pocket, $250, three times. And I would sell guys clothes that they left at my house at Buffalo Exchange to pay for it. Wow. So you're good to go. So I got the HPV vaccine at least. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It could have been, if, uh, it was probably by Johnson & Johnson and probably <laughs> causes my migraines. And that's where I got my migraines, the vax injury from the HPV shot. No, I, I definitely, I've been with girls who are like, to, but I've never had them make me show them the papers. But I, yeah, I'll get tested before. Yeah, because they're like, I'm just going to say this. New relationship, I'll get tested. But yeah. Uh, who is it? Someone, or maybe it's just a friend of mine had this theory. He's like, if a girl insists that you wear a condom, you don't have to wear a condom sure. with her because yeah. you know she always wear, uses them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, if a girl tells you not to wear a condom. Yeah. I used, to, I used to have a bit. She was like, please don't wear one. And uh, I said, no, because based on this, I don't think you'd be a good mother. <laughs> That's what I said to her. <laughs> You're reckless. Bad but, news. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think we like forgot about like STD. I feel, feel like people just forgot about it. And then I feel like chlamydia, a friend of mine had chlamydia and the doctor literally didn't even, he was just like, yeah, everyone has it now. Yeah. He didn't even try to like help her. It's like the Taliban. It came right back. It just, it, yeah. everyone's got it. And yeah. he, like there was, there's no cure for chlamydia. Is that true? What, to, like, what are the side effects? You have to chlamydia? burn it off. Is that is that the one that makes it pee when you burn or burn when you pee? <laughs> Every time you burn, so put a sentence. It makes you so you can't put a sentence together. That's what it says. I'm like, oh fuck, I can't speak. Ooh, can see? I throw out a weird incendiary pet peeve? Please. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Most people, I think, would have the pet peeve of like nepo baby. Like that's a new thing. Yeah. Of like nepo baby. Well, like, here especially. But was that well LA especially I feel like the acting <laughs> where you're stuff. like because uh, he's because he, he's related to Copley you mean totally it's like well so I mean yes it's annoying it's an unfair yeah the, this thing where like so Hollywood's not fair yeah no sh shit yeah nothing's fair <laughs> you know nothing's fair nothing's fair you know what my dad for all of his like whatever our dads were he used to always tell me when I was a kid I mean this is kind of bone chilling he would just be like life's not fair he drilled it into my head in a way that the go-go like, beach killer would say to all the victims, like, it's not fair. <laughs> it's I'm not sorry. Fair. I yeah. mean, truly like my yeah. dad would never, cause I'd be like, but then my sister got this toy and I didn't, he'd be like, life's not fair. Like he was so aggressive about like making sure that I knew that leaving the house. And I've never expected. But Hollywood is even more so because I think familiarity is such a big, like I would go to it. comedy clubs. They'd be like, you can't work here. You're a girl. I'd be like, that makes sense. <laughs> like I was oh. never like, I need to fight for fairness. Yeah, I mean, or there'd be like a nephew or kid of someone who'd get to go on before you and, you, and you'd be like, okay, uh, this sucks right now, but are they going to be doing it in two years? We'll see. Yeah. And a lot of the time they either weren't or they didn't. Because I look at people that have an advantage and I usually feel like usually they don't have a motivation or a skill set that I think the people that clawed tooth and nail for, like I look at Nepo people and I, I don't feel sorry for them, but I'm kind of just like, oh, like you don't know how the world works or like. You or know. they fucking rose to the absolute top. Like yeah, that, you yeah. either, you either like, oh, this is amazing. I got You're this like advantage. going to Paltrow. You're like, adversity doesn't Her mom, you. I was watching her mom on an old Columbo episode recently. Uh, she plays the wife of John Cassavetes, who's yeah. the fucking killer in that episode. Yeah. And it's, she looks exactly like Gwyneth Paltrow. It's insane. Wild. But it's also, it's like, I don't think anyone gets out alive. I don't think anyone gets out alive. And it's like Gwyneth Paltrow, you're like, God, she's just, blessed blessed born into royalty blessed gorgeous gets these jobs dates brad pitt dates ben affleck just makes a candle about her pussy a yeah. million dollars for that and then now people are like ah oh, gwyneth paltrow Napa. and you're just like no one but no one you know safe. what but that's the other thing is public scrutiny for decades plus right i mean when yeah. you when when you're that Look, I mean i'm sure there's some parts of it that are a bit unhinged but i thought like in that trial what i saw of her like she seemed like pretty yeah. nice and fair she and did but she also could have just given a million dollars to go like she it's like when you have that kind of but i think you have to 
at that level, and I've been through a very micro version of this, you have to set a precedent. You can't just sue me and I'll settle you can't for anything. Get, yeah, I think that's what she was doing, right? Yeah, because someone just walked past, like skied past her, fell over and was like, I'm going to sue you and thought that she was just going to go like, here's three million bucks to just make this go away, you know? Yeah. But um, like when I first moved, uh, the TV show I made just came out and I there was like billboards around town and stuff. And I guess it's a big thing where people, when someone newly gets is on billboards or whatever, they'll just go take you to small claims court and say that you hit their cab, like cab drivers would do it. So I get served small claims court. Um, That's she, hilarious. She hit my cab and they schedule it on December 24th so that you won't show up. And usually it just gets defaulted. They make the $6,000, which is like the maximum. So they, they go, okay, this person must have money, which when you first start doing TV and you have billboards like you don't necessarily you can be known but have no money like That's I had fucking hilarious. I was like what 60 grand in debt yeah and what this motherfucker didn't know is like I don't have a family <laughs> no one loves me December 24th I'm at the comedy store <laughs> you know what I mean I was on at like two in the morning or something so I was like so they just expect you're not going to show up it's downtown it's a hassle and like even the accountant I was working with at the time was like just don't do that it's fine like you know whatever you'll make the money back and I'm like no no I'm going and I showed up and like, it was like three dudes, like big belt buckles. And I like walked in and they were like, didn't expect me to show up. I got to sit through and it was like the, that really racist, uh, my dad used to tell me this story growing up, the racist briar patch story of where they throw the bunny in the briar patch. It's like a pretty racist story, but you don't realize like, it's my dream to sit through fucking small claims court on December 24th. Like this is where I, I there's no place I'd rather be. I know this is, I'm bit. like the guy before me, was being sued by a farmer because he stole his bull semen in the middle of the night. Like I was like, I, oh my I'll God. pay you six grand to just. It's the saddest here. heist of all time. <laughs> and then I got to go up and represent myself in court. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, here's but you won. Where, yeah, I was like, here's where I was that day. Here's da 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 whatever, and it was like best Christmas and, Eve of and my life. what was like, did you give him like, as you're walking out, you're like, I wish you well. Did you, did you pull like a Gwyneth? <laughs> I didn't. I was just like, please don't kill me. <laughs> yeah. What a weird, that type of scam is pretty fucking evil. Like to just, I mean, I guess there's worse shit. And your you mom would say cab drivers are having a really hard time. They're having right a hard time. <laughs> They're struggling. <laughs> your mom defending United over you. That is like, tells me everything I need to know. Oh my God. Know. And then I can't say anything to her because she'll be like, I have a migraine. I'm like, all right, you win. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it, I, I'm very close with my mom. I'm everything fucking with her. Everything makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Everything no, she's, makes sense. She's, uh, she is awesome. But yeah, we, I mean, but we're, that might be when you're where you get your someone, devil's advocate too. Sure. But when you argue with people, I mean, look, there's a closeness and, and that's why we bicker all the time. It's, yeah. it's not like arguing, it's bickering. It's, but it's also like, as annoying as that sounds, like it also was probably your like training for being a comic and being able to be, be quick. You had someone like disagreeing with you or like taking sure. the opposite side all the time. So you always had to oh. like kind of. But that's a peeve of mine too. Just a conversation with someone. They're like, actually, I'm like that fucking sound. For no reason. Yeah. For no reason. I got another fucking peeve. Give it. People... People, oh, I knew a guy used to go, hey, buddy. Just the way he'd say buddy. It, it, it makes my like spine Watching shake. men. Greet. Buddy, the word is fine. It was the way the guy said it. Watching men greet each other. I look away. Really? It's always <laughs> bad. It's like you'll see two hand gestures that are not going to meet. It, yeah. You're just like you see two and you're like, uh, it's like in slow motion. You're like, is this going to be a this or a this? Or Men a and women, though, that are friends can be that awkward, too, because you don't know if you're going for the hug with a friend. You don't know if, how you how you do it. Yeah, Sometimes but, you get the guy who wants to kiss the cheek and that can be weird. You know, you guys will do when it's like, hey, buddy, what's up, chief? I'm like, do you not Oof. know his name? I feel I, I feel like most of you guys don't even know each other's names, quite frankly. No, I, mean, I know names. There's always some weird nickname boss hey boss boss is a bad one which i feel like it's that's always, bottom five i think boss i always feel like there's no there's no use for the word boss ever you don't call wise, your boss boss so, never status wise i feel like the higher power person always calls the lower power person boss yeah. and it seems like patronizing yeah what's little, a boss little buddy's like, a rough one too which one hey little buddy ew big guy hey big guy, big guy awful <laughs> Little buddy. Like you guys are just, I don't know, watching guys talk at all. It's so cringe. <laughs> well, I apologize. It's been <laughs> but very girls different. are probably, yeah. you probably see us turn into dolphins. We're like, hey. And you're yeah. like, you guys hate each other. Yeah. I don't know. 
It's all weird. Everyone's, everyone's lost. Awful. Well, I think that's what I, I think people listening to this are like, they're awful. No, we're great. <laughs> right, wait, I don't see if I have any more peeves. So, am I going too long here? Give me, no. I could talk uh, to you forever. I just have to uh, leave in like 10. Okay. Let me Headed see. to Flappers to run some new yokes. Oh, nice. All and right. then we're at the improv together later. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and I do want to say, Class Act, the Class Act tour is oh, up yeah. in cracking. Oh, yeah. you're here in LA tomorrow night. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. And then Calgary, Bethlehem, that one, North. That one sold out, I think. But yeah. All These over. are amazing cities. Chicago, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Annapolis, New York City. Bri oh, going to Australia. Second time in uh, Vegas this year. I was like, fuck it. I kind of I I like love, Vegas. Love, I did, I I did the Mirage last time. This I time I'm it. doing uh, the win. N nice. But yeah, big ones are like Chicago Theater. Uh, sick. I've never headlined. And then uh, amazing. MSG Theater in New York, uh, the fourth. Huge. Toronto is a big one too. I don't, is Toronto not, do they not? Oh, there Symphony it is. Symphony Hall. It's like a Meridian Hall, I think, in okay. Toronto. That's a big one. They're, they're putting Toronto's in amazing. Venues. The crowds I are so great. I fucking love it. Yeah, they're all so over. Great. Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Indy, everywhere. Best. Uh, Pittsburgh, Phoenix. But uh, yeah, no, the road is the fucking best. It's the best. It makes People, you, comedy, yeah. it's like the best time. Comedy right now is my favorite it's ever been. I don't know if it's, we're also the best we've ever been at comedy, but it's like people are so ready to come out and laugh. And like, I think that doing podcasts or YouTube or whatever, like we found comedy fans. It's not just people like stumbling in and being like, I'm here to see comedy tonight. It's like people that like love. They have comedy. to make an effort. I heard Chris Rock said an awesome thing to me once. Uh, just like I, we it just happened to be in the same hotel in St. Louis. And it was like the first time I was playing theaters and he's just fucking so quick. Like he just, Anything he has a concise way of saying yeah. in a smart way. Yeah, it's like he's and, been thinking about it for 30 years. It happened yesterday. I know. He's just the best. But he said, uh, I said to him, like, man, I don't know. People, I've been doing clubs for so long and, and theaters are just so much better behaved. And he goes, velvet seats. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, that's true. That is probably part of it. It's just you feel classier when you're sitting in a velvet seat. Perfect. Chris Rock. <sighs> he's good. God damn it. The best. Yeah. All right. All right. You're awesome. Thanks Anytime for having me. You are. It's fun. Yeah. You got to come back on ours when you're. I when would you're love only, it, dude. When I only fans special time. drops. Yeah. Yeah. I'm allowed to have a couple guys to wine while pregnant. Really? So yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is an invitation. Come watch me yeah. on Sam and Mark's podcast. Uh, make the video that will make sure I lose custody of my child in 10 years. I end these awkwardly. Um, love you guys. Sam. Um, just samrell.com. Yeah. Class Actor. I'm so jealous of that title. Don't write out, friends. Oh.